The recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment. Hey. Welcome, everybody, once again to another edition of Sportsers right here on the Vet Radio Syndicate, the recognized symbol of excellence for online entertainment for veterans and patriots alike. I am your host, John Kerman, a.k.a. Mini. I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran. 2311 was my MOS. I, yo, yes, I'm an OG of the Vet Radio Syndicate and a card carry member of the E4 Mafia, allegedly. Uh, let's take care of a little business. Want to thank BeerBQSauce.com. That is BeerBQSauce.com. That is our very own here at VRS, Mr. Felix Irvin. He's a 17-year-old retired uh, <clears throat> Air Force veteran, and he is the HMFIC of BeerBQ Sauce. Uh, get on over to uh, BeerBQSauce.com uh, or go to the Facebook page, BeerBQ Sauce, and uh, follow that in there. Click the Shop Now button, and you can get there. Also, you can catch Felix every Wednesday as one of the co-hosts and producer of on a rotating basis with me of uh, the bar every Wednesday at twenty hundred Eastern Standard Time, along with again myself, uh, Jade Lopez, the Combat Cricket, and the Compound Commander, Chris Cornell. Don't forget to check out tomorrow night Monday Night Mayhem with Lunchbox and Judy. And right after the show, I believe. The Bear News is back again with the our HMFIC here at the Vet Radio City, Mr. George Pardos, uh, a.k.a. The Greek Bear, uh, a.k.a. Smells Like Windex and Uzo. But, uh, <laughs> let's get in with it. Let's get on with it. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and checking us out. Make sure you share a show out and give us his love. <clears throat> I know uh, sports aren't the most popular thing these, these days, but... Uh, if you've noticed anything about Sports Church, we uh, we only cover the things we love. Uh, and uh, so there you go. Uh, and whistle to whistle, I still love my sports, although I do have to I do have to um, mute a lot of commercials, to be honest with you, because uh, I want to hear that shit. And I don't give a fuck about it. I want to hear my sports. And we try to stay away from it in here. But it's not always easy to do uh, when it's shoved down your throat every day. Uh, it just becomes a part of the conversation whether you want it to be or not. Let's check in with the crew. Uh, Pookie is out uh, this week again. He is um, presumably highly intoxicated, uh, which is a tradition of ours. Before we get on airplanes, um, myself and Pook, uh, we, we've gone back and forth on that and missed many of flights. I'm sure you've heard the story uh, if you were listening to the bar when he was on. But anyways, uh, anyways, uh, Pops, how you doing? I don't know what happened to uh, T, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah. Uh, he'll, he'll pop back up in a second. Uh, <laughs> you know, you talk about the drinking before flights. If you remember, we missed the flight from you from the recruit depot when you when you graduated. <laughs> What's that? We missed the flight coming home from uh, graduation from the recruit depot. Oh yeah, because I got drunk. <laughs> Because I hadn't had a beer in five months, and I think I had like I don't know seven or eight, and I'm like, no, my flight's not like nine thirty. No, That's it's okay. seven thirty. Your grandma was helping you. Oh well, yeah, she got more drunk than me because I don't think she had a beer in thirty right. years. We gotta so. find those pictures. Those those were awesome pictures. Uh, her wearing the sergeant's lid. And- Uncle Eddie, <laughs> Uncle Eddie's got it uh, up in the den, I believe, or at least he used yeah, to. They- I'm not sure if he does anymore, but those were great. Hey, it was a it was kind of a neat ending of the season. Uh, F1 finished, uh, and gosh, gee whiz, Lewis Hamilton won again. But the neat part is, is that he sent his seventh consecutive world championship in F1, so that's the, uh, the new mark. Uh, he and, and uh, 
uh, Schumacher have both have seven titles. So it will be interesting to see what happens next year. Um, and the 12 hours of Sebring was this, was this weekend. Uh, and uh, we meet to see that Elio Castro Nevis in 20 years of racing finally got a title in IMSA. Nice. Uh, it finally took him, it took him 20 years to do it, but he, he finally did. And this is the <laughs> last year he was, he's driving for Penske. Penske's dropping their Acura program. And uh, he, he's, uh, he's moving on to another team. And it, it was neat to see that he finally got a win. Other than that, T's back, so we're ready. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. My I don't know what happened. My internet all of a sudden had no connection at all, and I had to go through the uh, settings and re, uh, <laughs> reset it up. It just said no connection. It's so, interesting. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but, yeah. What? Um <laughs> Yeah, um, as far as things going for me, uh, it's been a crazy week. Um, big typhoon hit uh, over by my wife's family in the Philippines. Uh, her How are they doing? Got hit really hard. So, um, been trying to keep up with them. Uh, they did uh, make it through all right, and um, we sent some money over to them, and they did some feeding program for some of the typhoon victims. So they went and went to one of the. Uh, shelters and brought a whole bunch of food in for people to eat so now nice. uh, we're gathering up some money again and we're going to send some more out uh later this week and try to help feed some more people over there but uh yeah Rizal province where they live got hammered really hard and marikina province got hit really hard so i think they were in marikina last night when they did this feeding so uh, i was good to see them do that and proud of them for the work well, yeah. they're putting in over there good job um, yeah no, the not to get too far off track, but I was watching the National Geographic special uh, about storms the other day, and there was one that was bearing down on the Philippines. It just barely touched it, took a hard right turn, and ended up sinking boats in Alaska. <laughs> it pulled. It was so big, it pulled another storm with it and slung it <laughs> back into Russia. It was crazy. I was like, holy <laughs> crap. They, they thought it was going to destroy the Philippines. It was it was it was one of the biggest ones they ever seen, and it barely it just barely scooted by. I mean, it screwed up a lot of crap, you know, storm surge and whatnot. But it just went well, no, and took a a hard right and started going up the uh, Russian coast, and then a little bit further right, and caught another storm and flung it into Russia, and then it went straight for the Aleutians and started sinking uh, crab boats. It was crazy. <laughs> What hey, else is going on? Though I'm glad I'm glad your people are doing good, though. That's good. I mean, you know, <laughs> I as good as they can be. Take a course oh, yeah. in I, Weber from the University of Pennsylvania, and it was an online deal, and it was only going to cost me seven grand. And I changed my mind, said no, I can do without. That <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I can follow radar just like just about anybody else. <laughs> <sighs> um. Yeah, other than that, I mean, we missed, I kind of, my daughter missed practices and stuff this week because we were busy dealing with stuff, trying to make sure my wife's family was okay, but I'll get her back to, back into the swing of things this week. Um, and then, yeah, yesterday we had to go to a birthday party down in West Bend for one of my wife's friend's kids. And um, right before we turned to go to the place, there's a new store that opened up um, called Tactically Complete. And I went and checked it out and it's all, uh, it's all like veteran owned company stuff that they try to sell there. So I'm going to try to uh, run there during the week and bring Felix's card and see if they can get beard BQ sauce in there. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, I got to pick a few things up there. They didn't have phone pay set up yet. Otherwise I was going to buy some uh, strike force energy packets and black rifle. How do you need energy packets there, for? Work day. I don't know. I, I like to drink an energy drink before I go to work. Oh God, you're you're gonna hit your stomach when you're like 45, 50 years old. <laughs> yeah, I know. Such is life. I'll deal with it when I get there. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you will. Yeah, I like I like the, I like the strike force ones. They're little like silver packets, and you open them up and you pour them in water or juice or whatever you want to. It's not like canned stuff. It's just a little packet that you pour into water. All right, <clears throat> let's get to it. Why don't we just kick it off with a little NFL since that's what's going on right now. We don't have much UFC to really talk about because we don't have the pook. So let me refresh my scoreboard here and we'll go through that. 
Oh yeah, uh, uh, George was asking what we we're gonna talk about too in the chat. I don't know if he wants to join us or not. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you, you can ask him if he wants to talk about something specific. But uh, let me get through this first. Uh, Thursday we had the Colts and the Titans. Uh, pretty good matchup. Looked like a, uh, a pretty solid game for the Titans in the first half. Didn't turn out so much. Phillip Rivers and Jonathan Taylor came back and uh, did a little damage and won 34 to 17. Uh, the Broncos and the Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders, uh, are in the fourth quarter, 609 left. Raiders leading 30 to 12. I think that's locked up. Uh, the Bills are right now down. With the ball, 23 to 26 with 252 left in the fourth quarter against the Arizona Cardinals and Kyle Murray. Murray, uh, I need uh, I need the Bills to win. I need it to be a Josh Allen touchdown pass or run. That would definitely help me. Uh, the Rams are defeating the Seahawks 23 to 13. Man, they start out hot as hell, but they are just tanking the Seahawks lately. And the Rams start out terrible, and <laughs> now they're coming on. But then 629 left in the fourth. Uh, there's plenty of time for Russell Wilson and company, but I don't know. It doesn't look too good for him. Uh, Rams are driving uh, in Seahawks territory. Uh, Saints are leading the 49ers 27-10. You might as well call that. Uh, without defense, the 49ers seem to be hapless. And without Jimmy Garoppolo, they're even more so. Uh, the Steelers are beating up. Big, 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 huge surprise shock of the week. Pittsburgh Steelers beating up on the Cincinnati Bengals 29 to 7. That's fine. Joe Burrow can make all his mistakes this week as long as he comes through me next week because Josh Allen's on a bye. So get them all the way this week, brother. Actually, there was a guy at work that was trying to bet that the Bengals were going to win this week with uh, my supervisor because he's a big Steelers fan. Dude, I used to, I, I, I literally had a GM and a, Corporate chef at Jeff Ruby Steakhouse tell me I was no longer allowed to take bets with with fellow uh, people at work about Bengals games because I was taking like two fifty a week from. Them. <laughs> 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 I take the spread and I just give them like a, two or three more points or three and a half more points. Uh, I think I took home five hundred uh, one week on the playoffs. The second time they played uh, the Houston Texans in Houston. Oh, oh they're gonna get it. I'm like, I'm giving you fourteen and a half points. The spread's only seven and a half. I'm giving you fourteen and a half points. How much you want? You you want? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take that. All right, idiot. Yeah, especially while they were, when they made the playoffs. Yeah, it looks like George wants to join, so I'll send the uh, I'll send the right. link to him. Uh, the Chargers defeated the Dolphins 29 to 21. The Cleveland Browns in a barn barter shootout with the Houston Texans, uh, won 10 to 7. Ugh. Uh, weather was not good there. They actually had to suspend the game for about 45 minutes. So, uh, yeah, no fun playing in sleet and hail and shit. Uh, there was a shootout between two terrible teams, uh, the Lions and the Washington football team. Uh, Detroit won 30 to 27. The Green Bay Packers looked, whoo, man, did they look soft. I don't know if you watched that game, T, but wow. Uh, I, I seen the stats on it. Yeah, they should have beat the uh, Jaguars by a lot more than they did. But if you're going to have an off week, that's the week to have it where you can still squeak out the win, I guess. Man, <laughs> they, they did not look good. I mean, they, they were good in spurts. Uh, you know, I had uh, MVS had a 78-yard touchdown catch. It was awesome. Uh, every time I He's drop that guy, a little bit every better. time I drop him, he has a fucking amazing game. It's annoying. <laughs> yeah, the last um, two weeks now, he's been okay. But, yeah, yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah he, that's the thing with him. He's so inconsistent. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they looked awful soft. Uh, they weren't aggressive off the ball. They weren't flying to the ball. Uh, they were They were banged. They're banged up in the secondary. There's no doubt about that. But it doesn't excuse the uh, uh, the front seven. Uh, for anything, because they, they should have been more on it. And, you know, they did come through in the end, getting two sacks in a row, uh, and, and, you know, the, when the Jaguars were knocking on the door to fuck this game up. So, uh, you know, they eked it out, but the Jacksonville Jaguars are competing with the Jets for the number one draft pick, obviously. They are one and eight. Here's a funny story. If I got this right, I think the Giants are in first place. <laughs> in the NFC East at three and seven, just beating the Eagles 27 to 17. Dallas is on a bye this week. So I think technically by games played, they're in first place, which is 
the Giants finally hilarious. beat somebody that's not Washington football team. <laughs> yeah. That yeah, was their yeah. only, uh, only two wins up to this point. <laughs> well, hey, you know, you, you got to beat everybody in your division and then 50% the rest of the way. So if they can do that, they're, they're, they're going to win their division. And be they don't got to the- win anything the rest of the way. They just got to win what's in their division because nobody's winning any games outside that division. Well, uh, well, that's what I'm saying. It's a baseball thing. It's a, you, 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 you beat people in your division, you, you play everybody else 50%. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the NFC East is just a fucking mess. I mean, God, it's just what happened. Well, I mean, I know that Cowboys lost um, Dak and whatnot, but uh, you know that's that is fastly becoming the Oakland Raiders, uh, the D- uh, Detroit Lions, uh, you know, of the NFC East. They're just they haven't been good since you know cocaine was fashionable, and uh, you know, I mean. <laughs> Like they're just terrible, they, you know. I mean, uh, what was it Barry? What was the last championship they won? It was uh Barry Switzer? No, was it Barry Switzer? Late eighty, late nineties, because uh, Jimmy won two and quit. Yeah, and then yeah, it would have been the nineties. Barry like, Switzer, I think it was the former Oklahoma uh, football. Oh yeah, coach. he. That was probably like early two thousands. Yeah, late nineties, early two thousands, something like that. Yeah, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Buccaneers defeated the Panthers, forty-six to twenty-three. Buccaneers are seven and three, so, despite being a little schizophrenic. You know, hey, they're they're hanging with the Saints, baby. They're hanging with the Saints. So <laughs> but they lost uh, both their games to the Saints. Yeah, so yeah, I know. Saints got the tiebreaker. Yeah, well, still, uh, still a few, few weeks left to go, so we'll see. But remember, there's one spot in every every uh, division now, so or every conference now, I should say. So. Whatever, or how, or however I put it, there's one extra playoff spot in the AFC, one extra playoff spot in the NFC this year. So e- the only really covered spot is uh, right now between the Buccaneers, the Saints, and the Seahawks, and the Packers. And the Seahawks are going to lose, so they're going to drop down. Uh, and there's only one, there's only one buy and that goes to the, the number one seed overall. So, uh, should be interesting. That, that's going to, I think that's going to make it a little more exciting. I, I'm sure the player is going to bitch a little bit. If I was the owners next year, I'd cut a preseason game, uh, because you're adding that extra game, but, uh, eh. and we got the Ravens and the Patriots coming on here, um, at eight 15, uh, tonight. Uh, Ravens are six Jordan and two. Says he's waiting. Yeah, I see it. I see it. All right, I got it. He can wait. Fuck. <laughs> God damn! What did I say? Let me get through this shit, and nobody movie listens. Movie. Both the no, Ravens please. six and two, four and zero away against the Patriots, three and five, two and two at home. This is going to be a bit of a blowout. Baltimore's favored uh, minus six and a half. Over under is forty four. Uh, the Vikings and the Bears. Uh, a lot of people. Uh, I have several players in this game, uh, so I'm just going to be rooting for a high-scoring game, basically. Uh, but the Vikings are favored minus three. The over/under is 43 and a half. Alrighty then. Uh, let's do a little fantasy football, George. You're just going to have to wait, bro. Um, <laughs> so we got the matchups here for the VRS Fall Brawl: Houdat Nation versus. My tacos, ghost monkeys. Uh, sorry there, Felix. You're going down. You're going down like a GI. GI. You're going down that fuck, that fast and that hard. I'm leaning you uh, 86 to 69. I've already got you beat basically by points. Uh, if I would have started two guys instead of uh, that hapless Mike Davis, ooh, I just scored a few more points. Um, <laughs> God, I would I would have probably set the set the high score this week. But I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, Monday at Lunchbox looks like uh, he's going to fall. Actually, already has fallen to Oops Pops. So uh, Monday Night Mayhem Lunchbox continues his epic slide. Uh, J-Dub and the Shenanigators looks like they're going to fall to Pterodactyl and probably your lowest scoring. There's my voice crack of the show. Your lowest scoring uh, game of the year. It's got to be. 120. I, I didn't even look at the scores today, so I, I no, don't I didn't know. even look at the scores. I, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Shut up. God, you're so full of shit. I can smell it from I here can't in get Wisconsin. Into my Yahoo, I can't even get into my Yahoo Fantasy app right now because I switched phones. Dee, 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 dee. I got I got a, 
a Samsung yeah. now instead How, of the iPhone. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> that's your own damn fault. The hell did you do that for? Uh, Pook Dog <laughs> is going up against Foolish Samurais, who's on a slide as well. Uh, Pook looks like he's just may eke this one out. Uh, he's projected 89 to 80. He's got 81 right now. Probably he looks like he's got only a one player left. Probably a kicker or some shit like that, uh, or a defense. And Fool Samurai has got quite a few guys to go, but uh, yeah, I don't think he's gonna eke it out. So once again, it looks like the uh, ooh Josh Allen did pass. Ooh, look at that baby. What I say? Two Sean Days. Whoever's got Sean Days, congratulations. But Josh Allen passed. I think. Uh, I think that put me up to yeah, put me up to 126. So or 91 projects me out at 126. So I might actually get the high score for uh, the first time all year, which is weird because I had it like 11 times last year, uh, which somebody else is doing this year. Pterodactyl dick. Anyways, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot of shake. It's gonna be shake up again. There's gonna be a lot of five fives, uh, and so we'll see how the points all shake out. See where everybody uh, ends up, but. We're going to bring in Mr. Takes Over a Show. He smells like Uzo <laughs> and Windex, but he is one of my favorite people in the whole world. Uh, I wish I would have been with him on the Marine Corps birthday this year, but we probably got in trouble. But uh, anyways, <laughs> welcome to Sports Church, our very own Mr. George Pardos. What's up, you big bear? Oh, not much. Hey, there he is. How you doing today? We're doing all right. How are you? Yeah, all right. <laughs> You know, I got to tell you, um, there's some interesting things going up in football this weekend. Um, so the first thing is, I, I, I want to talk about my my uh, Big Ten conference. Mm -hmm. um, please, dear God, do not fire Jim Harbaugh. Whatever you do. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I actually I'm kind with of you. felt bad for him last night watching that game. Oh, I never feel you. bad for that dude. Anybody who wears that blue and gold is going to just go, yeah, <laughs> just take a long walk off a short pier with some lead I mean, weight around yeah, their ankles. He has been the program for five years, so those are his players that he recruited. So I guess, yeah, it is um, your own damn fault. But, I mean, just watching that game, you get used to seeing Harbaugh being animated on a sideline and, he just looked like, yeah, I, I already know that I'm done after this season. <laughs> he might not I, make I did it. not really see him get in the, in the things at all. I got to tell you what's interesting is Indiana is 4 0. We got to play them next weekend. Well, they're going to be 4 yeah. 1. But. And they're, but, but, you know, what's interesting is I don't know, you know, Ohio, they're talking about uh, going back on a lockdown. Yeah. And um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I got to tell you this. Um, Ohio State is third in the country with, uh, you know, they're three and zero. Um, Notre Dame is put together a hell of a team this year. Yes, and absolutely. They I looked got, vulnerable. They looked vulnerable yesterday against uh, Boston College, though. They they did give up. Uh, what was it? Uh, they gave up thirty one points to Boston College. So <laughs> yeah, but Boston College is, you know, they they always dis, you know, they're always disruptive to Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, it, they always are. But I got to tell you, Alabama, you know, if I had to bet today who's the national champion, I, I'm going to say Alabama and Notre Dame are going to play in the playoffs. Um, I tell you, it, you know, if, you know, Clemson is also a good team if they get uh, Lawrence you know, back, which they will. They should. But, you know, everybody that's had, you know, one of the guys that uh, I wrestled with, um, he got COVID this week and he's saying he's having a hard time breathing. And so, you know, you don't know what it's going to, you know, you don't know what it's going to be like when they get back in. Um, and so, yeah, gotta, the, true go enough, uh, going to that, that Wisconsin-Michigan game we were talking about earlier, uh, Graham Mertz, the quarterback for Wisconsin, he just came off of COVID. He was one of the guys that had COVID, and he did not look nearly as good in that in the Michigan right. game as he did in Illinois. Uh, not not for two that, weeks. Yeah, part of that is, yeah, you can't practice for two weeks while you're on this protocol, which is what I was saying to my dad the whole time, too. And one of the sad things for Michigan, too, they only put up 11 points, and Wisconsin had six guys, six of their starters that were out for COVID on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Six defensive guys that were out, and they, all Michigan I, I commanded was 11 Alabama, points. Alabama, I mean, Clemson had 25 guys that have had COVID, so I don't know if they, you know, 
if, if, if they went about it the right way, they just, you know, got everybody exposed and said, hey, listen, let's, you know, treat them and chicken pox it. Yeah. Should have been doing it from the fucking get go. <laughs> Unless you're high risk, we should have been just chicken pox, chicken pox in this stuff. Yeah. Was, you know, not to digress too much, but did you see what Elon Musk did this week? Um, he took a test. He took four. Right. Oh, well, yeah, on the I same day with the same nurse, same test, yeah, same but place. He took the PCR test that they took. Let me let me tell you this: the the science behind it. Um, because COVID sits on top of your cells, it doesn't it doesn't infect your cells. It, it's easier for some some of these tests to go negative and then positive. So I, I'm not putting it. I'm not discounting that test. I, I think one of the things that we're going to wind up having too is, you know, let's just figure out um, how do we deal with it? Because, again, um, we're going to have another outbreak. We've had, you know. Oh, we're, yeah, we're going to get locked down here for sure. And number two, we have stupid people. Um, I, I mean, Ohio is just full of stupid people. All you got to do is go to your local Walmart and you can see that one. Well, dude, um, it's it's everywhere filled with stupid people. But I, I don't want to get too far off track. I just wanted to say I, I find I find I gotta, little issues with this. But I got to tell you something. So, I, can we talk about another sport real quick? You yes. Mind? Okay. So today, I want to I want to say something, and this is this is um, kind of un, unrelated to. Well, it is related um, to sports in general. So, one of my training partners is a guy by the name of Jason Coker. And Jason Coker owns the world record at 900 and at 198 pounds bench. He benched 903 pounds. And if you guys are watching this, just Google it. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, so this year has been horrible on, on, uh, you know, we lost Gail Sayers, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> lost and, Paul, Paul Horn in the other day. Right. Yep. Paul Did he really? Hall, Hall of Horning. Famer. Yep. Yeah. No, uh, uh, Heisman Day, Trophy yeah, winner. Heidi, yeah. Heidi, Heidi. Heisman Trophy winner. Hall of Famer. Wow. Yep. Green so, Bay Packer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was a Super great Bowl champion. I, Notre yeah. Dame. Mm -hmm. Notre <laughs> and, and you know what? You know what's funny about Paul Horning? Uh, and, and, you know, this is when he was playing for the Green Bay Packers, he was a car salesman because he wasn't making enough money mm -hmm. as a. Yeah. As a quarterback to be uh, to go full time, you know what's uh, funny about him? He tackled Mike Ditka at an awards ceremony, just fucking around with him, and broke his damn hip. <laughs> wow! Yeah, they were just joshing, you know. They, you know, they were. There's nothing serious about it. They were just playing around, and uh, he just kind of gave him a, a quick little takedown, and yeah, broke Ditka's hip. Well, wow. Harney, was, Harney was in the army, was yep. on leave to play in a playoff game for Green Bay, and they won. <laughs> so back in the day the reason I, I bring this up is one of the things that's happening today and, and I, I gotta tell you this is just kind of uh, my opinion on this is we're, we're comparing eras about you know way too often in sports and not realizing that you know certain eras you just can't compare and one of the things is that you know if Gail Sayers would have been playing today and, and would have had the same opportunity to get his knee replaced, yeah, uh, he oh. would have. He would have. I, I don't know. He would. I don't know. He would have been a Marshawn Lynch, but he would have had fifteen hundred yards a year. Um, he played in an era where you know he he his Hall of Fame career was in forty games, yeah. and and so I think one of the things that you know they're talking about today is they're comparing lifts of guys 30 years ago um oh there's no compare it is, it's un it, it's unfair it's there's so many look tom brady's what 42 <laughs> you couldn't do that 10 years ago a little you, 20 or 30 okay. okay let me ask you this and and as a consensus yeah i think in the 1980s th the three three or four of the hardest hitters i'm going to put my all all-time hitters in the in the 80s Ronnie Lott. Oh, God, yes. Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Singletary. Yeah. And the fourth one is, you guys might not agree on this, but is I think it, it's either um, Dexter Manley or Reggie White. Oh, I, I, I like Reggie. 
Yeah, yeah, right. That dude was such a weird character. He's such a such a Jesus freak and a man of God, but holy crap, he was on the football field. He was a terrifying <laughs> individual. I mean, he had the wrath of God. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he had the Boondock Saints tattooed on his back. Like, he was just that crazy. I mean, yeah. but you see him on the field, and he just, his eyes are just huge and he gets on the sideline and he's just you know he's hugging guys and somebody screws up he's over patting and talking to him and he puts the helmet back on gets on the field he's gonna kill somebody there's a play where he he ran down troy aikman now i don't you know and he which isn't that hard to do but well (laughs) i gotta tell you you know when troy you know when troy aikman played at oklahoma he was a very i mean he was they recruited him because he was fast don't don't kid yourself. But he can still find his car keys. Yeah. But anyway, going to I don't know that if if you would have had to to play against the rules of the eighties where guys could come in and just plow you, hit you. I don't know that Brady makes it, you know, sixteen years or seventeen years in the league. I don't yeah, know. Probably there's, not. There's many, there's not yeah. many quarterbacks that would. <laughs> No, there's not. I mean, Brett was probably the last. Brett Favre was probably the last one for the rules started getting really crazy. That you know probably played through more injuries than than he should have. I think Troy Aikman actually had a co- coherent sentence uh, the other week when he was doing the Packers uh, Thursday night game, and uh, it's a rare thing for Troy these days. But um, <laughs> um, he was saying, he's yeah, he says I know, I know for a fact that uh, that. Um, <laughs> Brett played through things that he shouldn't have. There's, there's no doubt about it. The concussion protocol wasn't what it was. Oh yeah, yeah. You you know what it is. That that probably explains about (laughs) a quarter of the interceptions. Right. Remember remember we were talking about Unitas a couple weeks ago, and there's that picture on from uh, Life Magazine of Unitas kneeling in the end zone with blood running down his head. Yeah, yeah. And he continued to play. Yeah. Yeah, well, well yeah, I mean, and the other one that was the rule was that you know that they changed in the seventies, and and I think it made football what it is. To I mean, the two rules that I think made football was the the uh, the Mel Blount rule made football today, but um, the substitution rule that they instilled in the seventies made things completely different. So, in the sixties and the seventies, the 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 you know I posted a picture of the nineteen sixty. Or sixty-two Detroit Lions. I did and, see that picture. And the there's a picture of the nineteen ninety-four. The football teams are just so much um, bigger in oh, in. God, yes. now, I'm not talking about just size, but I'm talking about bigger in. You know, they went from 32, 33 man rosters to forty-six man rosters, forty-eight yes, man. Do. And, yeah, and so now, now I think yeah, uh-huh. it's fifty-two plus a practice squad. And now you almost have a whole another team in and of itself. Well, and here, here's one of the things, too, is that you're, you're running back because of the rules back then. You know, Walter Payton averaged, I think, in, the, the, what, 1976 and 77, he was averaging 28 carries a game. I don't think, <laughs> you know, I don't know any Marshawn Lynch maybe today or, you know, Derrick Henry is probably yeah. the only other one that, um, that would do that. And I, and I think that one of the things that's happening today is the fact that, we don't realize what the game. If we're not older enough, we we don't realize what the game looked like. And well, it's definitely changed. The rules have changed it for sure. I mean, you know, you started to see a little bit of a revolution when he we had Bill Walsh in the West Coast offense. Then everybody started copying that. Then he came out with the almost side by side with that. He came out with what was called the run and shoot. Um, and then all of a sudden, you started getting. Uh, rules about hitting quarterbacks, uh, rules about, uh, you know, stiffer penalties or stiffer looks at pass interference. And then people started to combine the two. Basically what an NFL offense is, is now it is a jet sweep, uh, run PO, uh, West Coast, uh, run and shoot hybrid. That's basically a, a NFL offense if you have the talent. Now there's teams that don't run it, like Tennessee, Runs a weird RPO uh, with like three tight ends and a wide receiver. A lot, you know, they still play a lot of smash, uh, smash mouth football. But most teams, and now even college, uh, 
play a very, 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 very pass heavy offense. And I read an article the other day, Nick Saban was talking about, he says, you know, it's very frustrating being a head coach now trying to scheme and trying to recruit uh, defenders because the rules are so in favor of the offense. Everybody wants to see points. And so it's coming down to can I how much do I have to balance my off or my defense against recruiting as many athletes as I can to play offense and just out shoot the other guy? I gotta make right. two or three big stops a game, one or two takeaways a game, and I can win. But that, I have to do that. And I have to out shoot. I have to score and score and score and score. And he goes, It's kind of annoying, and I'm getting a little tired of it. And I'm like, ooh. Sounds like somebody might be done uh, or soon. Well, but you got to remember, too, you know, Nick Saban, um, you know, when he was, at, uh, you know, Nick, Nick Saban, you know, was in Ohio. Um, by the way, his uh, wife was my English teacher in high school. This nice. Is uh, no wonder you hate him so much. I, I, I don't hate it. No, no, no. I've never <laughs> said anything bad about Nick Saban. I know. Just this, it's the this Alabama cool. fans that I hate. Mm. <laughs> it's the fans. And, and you know what's so funny is you – you you know, you can insult them. That, you know, I, I one guy got mad at me because I was insulting Alabama fans. I was like, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't even know you could read this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's the fans that are annoying. But, you know, you got to remember also, too, that uh, when one of my fa- – I, I tell you, I can't stand the team, but I, I respect the team as the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Um, the Steelers in the seventies changed the way football was played. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know the idea of uh, you know could you imagine? And, and let's just say that they were in the league today. Um, Rocky Blyer and Franco Harris in the backfield today, and you having to try to you know try to stop that offense with mm. you know, or could you imagine you know you trying to defend LC Greenwood with that damn head slap? Mean oh, Joe yeah. Green and. And they would just, they would head slap you, and they, they would just get by. I, I, you know, and that's one of the things I, I think that today is that we're, we're just not very, we 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 just do a disservice to the sport when we're trying to. Well, an interesting well, thing you, about that, interesting you, you, thing about that time, time period is physicality was really on the rise because not only you got that in the NFL, but then think about the uh, Philadelphia Flyers of that time period in the seventies. That's when. That's when the enforcer really became part of the game. The seventies was just a physical time for sports. <laughs> well, could you imagine? You know, like uh, one of my favorite is uh, Tio Domi. You know, I, I mean, I don't know if the rules. Him and uh, McSorley today. I don't know. You know, would they let him get away with some of the stuff that they got away with in the nineties? You know, and that's a. Uh, you know wh- that that's a, a good question in hockey. And the, and the rules in hockey were, uh, you know, you let them fight as long as they're on their feet. Yeah. Well, and, now and- now with COVID restrictions, they're trying to ban even body checking in the Ontario Hockey League and the, I think the uh, Quebec Minor Junior Hockey League as well. And it's not the actual sports leagues that are trying to ban this. It's the Minister of Sports for the elected governments. Government is actually trying to change the games now. <laughs> Well, I, I, I always like hockey. And I, I got to tell you, you know, one of the things that we went, um, I I did um, when we was here is that we went to see the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets play. And I got to tell you one thing about Nationwide Arena, their beer is cheap. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, it's, that seems like a team that, you know, if you're a red-blooded American, you can get behind. They got the cannon there for every game, the Civil War cannon. And, yeah, right. cheap beer. That, that's that's uh, the kind of team you can get behind. They haven't yeah, had a, it, a ton of it, playoff success, but, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> we're just never going to be that good. I mean, Columbus is a small market. People don't like hockey that much. Ohio State takes all the air out of the sales. And so, you know, you're never going to get, you know, a big – a, you know, a big following, but I mean, we're fans are loyal, but you know, it takes a lot of money in hockey because you got to have, you got to run three shifts and each shift better have a, a guy that's scoring goals. Yeah. And we, we just don't have that. Well, so then they might have some coming up. I mean, the Lake Erie monsters won the, uh, or now it's the Cleveland monsters. They, right. They won the uh, championship in the AHL not too long ago. So they got some players coming up 
through their system at least. <laughs> I, well, I don't want to say you you were bringing up like old school stuff, and I, I get in arguments with Pook about this all the time uh, about LeBron James, and I'm like, bro, if he would have played Detroit <laughs> instead of Jordan, oh boy, would have been broke, like broke. Like I, I'm just saying, I I think he's a phenomenal athlete, and I think he's a freak. I think he's a, he's our generation's Magic Johnson, but he's no Michael. I'm sorry, he's just not. Yeah. And he he flops too much. He complains too much. He whines too much. He showboats too much. And he's been in the finals, I think, th- oh, two and a half times more than he's actually won them. So you know, he won one in Cleveland, two in Miami, one in L.A., and nobody cared. Uh, right. MJ won all his in one spot. Uh, Magic won all his in one spot. Larry won his in one spot. Now the game was a bit different as far as like free agency, but it still happened. Guys still got traded. Guys could leave and, and sign, but rarely did you ever. Because if you were on a good team, why the hell would you go? Especially if you were the man. Uh, but he was never satisfied, and I just I don't think he would have survived. Or it had even, you know, I think he might have had eighty five percent of the success that, that he had. But he's also not had, you know, the, the best player ever. I Okay. He's had some good supporting cast. But here, here's the, one of the things. I, and I'm and I, I crit, critical of LeBron. LeBron doesn't have many 60-point game, 60 point games. Um, Kobe has had 60. You know, Kobe is better than LeBron. Oh, the only person better than Kobe is Michael. Yeah. And, you know, and I put him as one and one A. Um, Kobe had, you know, much, you know, scored more points um, and had, you know, just had a phenomenal, a better game. The, the problem, I think, with LeBron, and, and it, I think part of it is, is the NBA, is the NBA just, it, it, it's boring. Because, again, you know, you, you, it, it's become a, just a shooting fest. And yeah. I, I, I yeah, nobody see. plays defense, man. I want to ask you this: uh, Gene Wasberg says Michigan blows this season. Any ideas? Keep <laughs> Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, that, oh, well, no. that's why Jim Harbaugh. Oh, He's a terrible recruiter, apparently, because I said this a couple weeks ago, and and, and pops echoed it, and 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 uh, 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 T did, and Pook did, and I'm like, real. The key to being a great college football team is uh, undisclosed money. And being a great recruiter, <laughs> uh, you know, being a decent coach, you got to be a decent coach and have and, and have good guys behind you. But undisclosed money and good recruiting, which kind of go hand in hand, because Ohio yeah, State money, you don't have the recruiting. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, Ohio State, Florida, uh, Alabama, LSU, USC, Penn State. Um, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. I mean, oh man, jeez. I mean, you know, in in Michigan has had the Michigan's had some great teams. Um, but uh, oof, you, you know, the Jim Harbaugh you know, era has not been kind to Big Blue yeah. at, at all, which I'm totally fine with. Tired a guy, give him an extension. I hate him. I hate him almost <laughs> as much as I hate Ohio State. Almost. You know, you know what was the funniest comparison that I heard? And it, it was my dad last night. We were watching. I went over to my parents' house. I was watching the Badger game over with my dad. And uh, he was talking about, he's like, he's like, you know, when I in the 70s and 80s, me and Uncle Dave and Mike, we used to go to these games at Camp Randall. And the Badgers were absolutely terrible. And every time Michigan would come in and mm-hmm. just kick the shit out of us. And he's like, this game feels like those games that we went to at Camp Randall, but it's just reversed. And Michigan yeah. is now the Badgers of the 70s and 80s. And oh, yeah. we're the ones that are the insurmountable mo- uh, mountain that they'll never oh, be God, able to don't you remember? I don't know how. <laughs> you're probably too young to remember this. But we tied Ohio State at Camp Randall. And we rushed the field. Like, literally, people got injured. And that's because if we tied Ohio State, we took the Big Ten and we went to the Rose yeah. Bowl to face. I remember, I remember when they uh, 
the first time they had beaten Michigan in about 20 years. My dad was at that game where they ripped the goalpost down and like, yeah, that was the same season. That was the their, their role. The, 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 yeah. th- they thought they had a shot at the national championship that year. Yeah. My, my, my dad was at that game. I remember him going down there because then it was on the news and he wasn't home yet and there was no cell phone. So it's not like he could call us and tell us he was okay. So yeah, that whole day well, we were like, Oh shit, <laughs> his dad yeah, in the I, hospital. <laughs> I didn't know you know anything about cell phone technology at that point because it didn't really exist. I also didn't think I'd get caught swinging from a tree in Madison, Wisconsin after the victory or tie against Ohio State. But apparently, my mom watches the news, and there I was. So, anyways, did she um, beat you? That did what? Did she beat you? No. Why not? No, she's she's an Irish Catholic mother. She didn't have to beat you after after a certain amount of beans. It's just you know, <laughs> just you just get a look, and then oh shit! All right. Like, for example, like I got belligerently drunk one night, lied to her about it and uh, passed out in my car in the driveway. And, uh, yeah, she uh, walked me in the house. Drunk. You got belligerently drunk? I find that hard to believe. Well, you know, it happens. No, it never happens. Every once in a while. And, uh, yeah, uh, she had helped me up the stairs into my bed, watched me all night because I was puking in a trash can. And then uh, she made me tomato soup, grilled cheese, set it down on a TV tray in front of me, turned on the TV and screamed in my ear, how you feeling there, son? And uh, that was the punishment. That was it after that. You right. know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, my head still hurts from that. But uh, so moving I gotta, on. I got to tell you something I wanted. Uh, do you mind if we bring up bare knuckle boxing? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> who was I watching? Who who's I was watching somebody's video. Oh, it was uh oh god, one of the dudes from Black Black Rifle Coffee. He's uh he was on that show uh Matt Best? The, No, the Mexican yeah, uh, dude. Jerry Vargas. No, the big Mexican dude, Var- oh, Vargas Crispy Omar no. No, is he on a the big Mexican TV dude show? That's missing a leg? No, did I say he was missing a leg, motherfucker? No. God I damn! Any which way I loose. think his name is Vincent Vargas or Vargo or Vargas. Oh, Vincent like, Vargo. Yeah. Yes, Rocco. Yes. Yeah. Rocco. Yeah. And he put on a video the other day he's with his son, and he's like, "Why are you making it so hard for me to watch bare knuckle boxing? I just want to watch bare knuckle boxing. Why is this such a problem? They're doing it. No one's putting a gun to their head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah." So, all right, I put my thing in there. Uh, go ahead, George. So, one of the things I want to I want to bring up um, is Paige Van Zandt. Just uh, is she signed with Bare Knuckle Boxing? And um, Uli Diaz had a three second KO in um, in Bare Knuckle Boxing fight uh, fight league. But I'm going to tell you something. I you, I'm a big um, you know, I'm a big MMA fan. Yeah. And growing up in the 70s, um, there's a there used to be a TV, uh, there was a series of movies with uh, Clint Eastwood called Any Which Way You Can. That one oh, was yeah. Like, yeah. Philo. Left turn that right. Is, that was the original, um, the, the original beginnings of bare knuckle boxing had been around for a long time. And one of the things that the reason it's made such a big uh, comeback is that now a lot of those fights that people used to put on um, have become really popular. And so, you know, the reason that they sanctioned it, the government wanted in on it and wanted some of their money. Yeah, and so, yeah. um, and so there's, um, so there's a big push for this. Um, and <laughs> he is, um, there's a movie that he that uh, Charles Bronson came out with in 1975 called Hard Times, and it was based on a real life. Um, it, it was based on a real life, um, um, you know, bare knuckle boxer, and so this guy had over um, I, I don't know how many wins he had, but it was a shit ton, like four four hundred four hundred fifty wins, and so Holy shit. And the guy, so the guy, there was this. Actually, his uh, wife has opened up his pickle jars. Well, there was, yeah, but you can't hit that hard with bare knuckles, though. That's why. Well, fight, that's what I did, yeah. That, Still, that's after, that's, I don't care how hard you hit after so, <laughs> do that that many times. So a lot of these fight, there was a circuit, and they had rules. I mean, it wasn't just like, you know, um, 
and these guys would go around to different towns, and it, it was and they had these underground um, fight loves. <laughs> and and finally, you know, that's why the pot, the movies, you know, when it came out in seventy five, you know, the the um, with hard times with Charles Bronson. And then, um, you know, the, the any which, you know, Philo Beto movies, um, <laughs> they were, they, it was, re- these were real fights. And that's why it <laughs> appeared to a lot of them. Now they're starting to, to a lot of states are starting to, to sanction these again. And I think it's, I, I honestly, I think it's a good thing. I think it's, you know, I, I don't want to go to the, you know, go to the days of, uh, you know, legal, uh, you know, you know, the, the chicken fighting or the dog fighting. But bare knuckle, I, yeah, I think that, that's a good thing. Yeah, you're a perfectly sane human being in control of, of your faculties, and you want to beat the shit of another person, bare knuckle, and you want to assume the risk, I, fine, go for it. I mean, I've done it plenty of times, and about speaking, speaking 51% of the, chicken- of the time it worked in my favor, and 49% of the time it didn't. And the forty nine percent it didn't it didn't work out very well at all. <laughs> uh, you know, my loss I lost hard. I won and won hard. Um, you know, it's just like the, what I said the other day. You you made plans. The universe says no, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh yeah. I, I just think I, I just think that one one of the issues that is today is that you know we sports are about entertainment dollars, and we you know we as a species just want to be entertained. And and seeing grown you know grown human beings um, engage in violence, I mean, is is you know that that's the it's, it's vicarious and it's cathartic. Well, it is, and it, and it's also you know you you know you go back to the days of the uh, you know the 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 Romans where they had the gla- you know the gladiator fights or the you know the yeah. Greeks and the Olympics. Um, you know, you basically just wanted to see grown men beat up each other, and and it was. You know, it was not uh, not a bad idea. No, oh, competition and ambition equals money. Well, and one of the things with the bare knuckle boxing is that a lot of them is um, they a lot of the ones that they're doing now are they're fighting the, you know the same you know they're fighting with the same um, the same rules, and so they're not uh, you know they're they're not uh, as um, it's not as violent. It doesn't, it, you know, it's it, it, the, and the bare knuckle fighting uh, championship is, you know, they're, they're expanding. They're, they're doing very well. And I thought that they, you know, people just want to see, you know, good old fashioned violence and man and uh, mayhem. Oh, and I think that's one of the things hurting the NFL. I mean, I understand their player safety thing, but once again, you're a, a, a illegal adult. You understand the risks. I'm saying that the, I don't think, Everything the NFL done is wrong, but I think some of it is taken away from it. I mean, come on, the same people like ESPN and all of them are, are, are applauding the NFL for all these things. We're the same motherfuckers who had hardest hits of the week segments on Sunday right. night football wrap ups. So like, who are you kidding? You hypocrite Fox. Like, yeah, they, Lewis, everybody's hypocrite. Lewis, At least Lewis. I admit you that I am. You, you made money off of this. And the NFL films literally sold videotapes of the right. vicious hits of the year. It's yeah. like, you fucking get out of here. Like, come on. NASCAR did the same thing. IndyCar did the same thing. I mean, they just sold tapes of crashes and all kinds of shit. It's like, it's, and all of a sudden, you're woke. It's, get out of here. No, you're not woke. You're afraid of your bottom line. Because now a small minority of people scream because they're crazy. Uh, and Twitter bomb you and Facebook bomb you and Instagram bomb you and whatever. And now you're just afraid of losing sponsorship. Well, you might have been right on that, but now you're losing viewers because everything right. is down at a time when it should be as higher than it ever should be because of all the lockdowns. And I'm sure we're going to go through a whole bunch now again. Uh, but sports has it, you know, people are predicted, oh, this is going to be the greatest year in sports. Nope. Been the worst in like 20 years. Weird. Hmm. Well, the other thing is too is that also I I got to tell you this is you know people are now are fighting over broadcast you know who's broadcasting what and, and I think that that's going to be a, a a big thing in 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 the future is uh, well, yeah remember it used to be CBS used to have the AFC right Fox had the 
um, uh, NFC, and Monday Night Football was usually the purview of ABC. Then ESPN comes along. Then you have, uh, you know, a bunch of other cable networks coming in. And now, like, I can I watch a lot of my games on Yahoo. So Yahoo is brought to Amazon Prime has Thursday and Sunday right. games sometimes. So everybody's got their finger in the pie, and uh, it's just it's it's interesting. It's it's you know I didn't I didn't get to watch. Let's say this. I'll say it this way: allegedly, legally, watch most of the MLB playoffs until the World Series. I had to find alternative ways to watch those baseball games because I don't have cable. Uh, and most of them were on TBS and TNT and, and Fox Sports 1 or whatever. So I had to find other ways to do it. I watched the whole World Series, uh, every game, um, with my wife and my son. Well, a little bit with my son. The whole World Series is on, we're on broadcast. Hey, what's, his, yeah, but, what, what's your son's fastball up to right now? Dude, he, he's uh, – um, let's put it this way. He better be I'm gonna put this. I'm going to put this out there. Unfortunately, he's still sticking to the right, but uh, I'm, I'll work on that one once uh, <laughs> the time is determined. But uh, he has got a pretty good arm, uh, and I think he's a born pitcher, and I'll tell you why. Because he can hit me from about 15 feet away with a ball. However, if I throw the ball back at him, he either hits him in the head or he misses it. <laughs> So he's a natural born pitcher. <laughs> he's the worst defender on the field and the dumbest guy in the field. But boy, can he, he can throw. He, he can, I put a target up. I stand all the way in the hallway, give him this little rubber ball, and he just, and, it, and, it's, and it, it's got a little ass on it for a, a not even two year old kid. There's something there. But if I throw it back to him, it bounces off his head or his chest, or he watches it go over his head or whatever. So natural born pitcher. Uh, yeah, so, but, uh, we'll work on the left, you know, he, he does both like me. He, he can do a lot of things with both hands. Uh, but, uh, he chooses to use his right quite often, but, uh, you know, that's okay. We'll just put the glove on his, on his, on his, on his right and just have him throw, throw the ball to me with his left hand until it gets strong enough and he'll be fine and learn how to switch it. And learn how to catch, and he'll learn it. if that's what he wants to do. Because I don't want him to play football. I'm not going to discourage him from playing football. Because right. if I do, I guarantee he's probably going to want to play football. But uh, I'm going to try to make baseball as fun as I can for him. Because you know, I, I would like him to be be able to find his keys and complete and make uh, complete sentences like Troy Aikman can't do. So you know, <laughs> well, I don't even think he knows who he's talking to sometimes, man. I really don't. And he was one of the great quarterbacks, Hall of Famer. I mean, Jude, he was a beast. Um, but anybody's a beast with, with uh, Emmett Smith and, you know, five of the biggest white boys in the country uh, on your offensive line, I'm just saying. <laughs> Larry Allen? You know, well, you know, you get – well, you know – Exception to prove the rule, but Jesus, come on! I mean, you know, there's there's well, great quarterbacks because they're made great, and there's great quarterbacks because they do amazing things that that shouldn't be done. Brett Favre did amazing <laughs> things that that on shit teams. Troy Aikman uh, had, I think, one losing season, maybe two, and uh, yeah, he had a great team, amazing, fr- amazing offensive line, yeah, amazing back, one of the probably the most the guy who changed the receiving game forever, Michael Irving, you know, that guy who was too tall and too fast for physics to possibly yeah, understand it, it, you know. It helps when you can just hand the ball off to Emmett Smith, whereas a guy <laughs> like Favre, yeah, who did he have? Dorsey Elevens? I don't I think he ever – I think he had one or two 1,000-yard uh, rushers in, like, yeah, 16 like years. Dorsey Elevens and Ahmed Green, I think. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the Troy Aikman hit. had uh, I don't know how many in a row with uh, Emmett Smith. Yeah. Anyways, uh, hey, we gotta get into some college football. Uh, get a little more in depth. I know T's got some detailed notes, and I'm very proud of him for doing so. And I'm gonna look up what I got that I pulled up and wrote down notes up here. So uh, T, why don't you uh, right. lead a little college football? It was pretty, pretty good weekends. Week eleven, a lot of cool things happened. A lot of interesting things happened. <laughs> I, I solidified my uh, I'll start this I'll start out with I solidified my Heisman Trophy winner 
uh, this weekend. That is uh, number six Florida's Mr. Kyle Trask, who threw six touchdowns. Yeah, which I have that in my notes, actually. Yeah, he, he had a dominant game. Um, but, yeah, actually, and the other interesting thing when I was going through all the uh, top 25 football was there was no top 25 teams that matched up with each other this week. They're all against unranked teams. But we'll start out number 25, the Louisiana Raging Cajuns took on the South Al- took on South Alabama. And you had it's in the jeans. Levi Lewis passed for 252 yards and three touchdowns. And Chris Smith had 99 yards to lead the late Raging Cajuns to victory over South Alabama, Woo. 38 to 10. And we move on to the uh, number 23 Northwestern Wildcats. They matched up with Purdue. And Evanston, where Peyton Gordon Ramsey served up a well cooked <laughs> dish nice. on the Purdue defense with a hearty helping of Raymond Chiacchio Brown connecting with the receiver for three touchdown passes as the Wildcats beat the Boiler and Boilermakers 27 to 20. And we move on to number 22, Liberty took on Western Carolina. The, what, the Liberty Flames scorched Western Carolina as the will of Malik Willis was imposed for 306 yards and three touchdowns and adding 97 yards and two touchdowns with his feet. The Liberty quarter for the Liberty quarterback. Liberty wins 58 and 14 to go for their first ever 8 and 0 start in school history. Damn. Next, we move on to number 20. The USC Trojans took on the Arizona Wildcats in the desert where the Wildcats had upset on their mind behind quarterback gunner Grant Gunnell, who threw That's for three touchdowns and 286 yards, including a 75-yard run and gun to Tavian Cunningham. But in late, gra- late game dramatics, the Trojans running back Vave Malapé Cross the state line and help the Trojans pull out of the hole they were in. Trojans, 34. Wildcats, 30. Woo! And we move on to number 19, Southern Methodist University Mustangs taking on the <sighs> Tulsa Hurricanes. It only took Tulsa, them 30 years to, to uh, get past the death blow. I remember, George, I, know, I remember you remember that, right? Yeah, the yeah. death penalty. The death well, penalty, yeah. say, you know why? And, and let me tell you one thing about the death penalty with SMU. Um, after they gave him the death penalty, they said they will never do that to another program ever. No, no, until yeah. Penn State. In all, I, yeah, Penn State <laughs> comes to mind. They, uh, they should. And then they be. reversed it a year later. But yeah, good point, George. All right, keep going, T. All right. In Tulsa, it looked like the Mustangs were going to run wild, starting scoring with an 18-yard interception return for a touchdown and scoring 21 unanswered points, taking a 24-7 lead into the half. But in the tail of two halves, Tulsa rattled off 21 unanswered points, led by Tulsa's quarterback, Zach Morris-Smith, with two fourth-quarter touchdown passes, and the Hurricanes blow past the Mustangs 28-24. When we go on to number 16, Marshall taking on Middle Tennessee in Huntington, West Virginia, where Marshall's thundering herd came out in all black uniforms and number 75 on their helmet to honor the 75 killed in the historic plane crash 50 years ago. The God, herd you know went, they were going to win that game. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and the herd went to the well of quarterback Grant Wells, who passed for 330. 36 yards and five touchdowns and Marshall dominated the day winning 42 to 14. Number 13, Wisconsin Badgers went to Michigan against the Wolverines and in the big house in Ann Arbor, the COVID depleted Badgers went with down six starters, but shaked off the issue, digging out two interceptions on the Wolverines first two possessions and turning both into touchdowns. Badger quarterback Graham Cracker Mertz threw for two touchdowns, and running back Nakia High Watt Watson added two more on the ground as the Badgers buries the Wolverines 49 to 11. Number Woo. 11, Oregon Ducks went to the uh, Washington State Cougars. Ooh. In Pullman, what Washington. Boy, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because that's where J Dub's from. <laughs> Yeah, and they beat us in the Rose Bowl last year. Yeah, so fuck them. Well, yeah, but they did, didn't Oregon just make cocaine legal? 
yeah. cocaine, meth, whatever, heroin. Whatever they, you they, they, do. I don't know if they made it legal. They, they made it they decriminalized. decriminalized they it, they yeah. decriminalized all drugs, basically, in Oregon. Yeah. This is what's going on there. So good luck with so that. So in Portland, Portland, Washington, he saw the Cougars jump all over the Ducks in the first half, and they were carrying a 19-14 to 14 lead into halftime. But in the tail of two halves in the second half, Oregon quarterback Tyler Show slew the Cougars' defense through throwing for three of his four touchdown passes as the Ducks downed the Cougars 43-29. to I wonder if Ryan Leaf was at that game. And we moved to East Lansing where the Michigan State Spartans and the Indiana Hoosiers faced off. And it would seem that the uh, – Fans in East Lansing would have liked to have seen their team show up as quarterback Michael the Phoenix Penix found wide receiver Tyler Frymaster Fryfogel twice for TDs, including a 65-yard pass that burnt the Spartan defense. Michigan State poll workers couldn't find a single point for the Spartans as the Hoosiers had a key eye on them all day. Indiana, 24. Michigan State, 0. <laughs> well, we go hey, to Blacksburg, dude, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, we did a thing. So we uh, <laughs> we did a home haircut this week. All right, looking good, big guy. So I did. Uh, the wife wouldn't let me. Uh, hey, he's all. Got to do it up high. Got to do a pie. There you go. <laughs> no, no, up high. So, hey. There you go. <laughs> so we did a home haircut. Yeah. Well, you want mommy? Oh, that's all I get. Okay. All right. He's like the pretty, the pretty girl on Wednesdays isn't here. I don't want to stay. When Jay's on, he wants to sit on my lap for like an hour. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, yeah. He. Uh, we we gave him a. I wanted to give him a straight Marine Corps because I had a nice set of wall clippers, you know, that keep uh, cleaned and lubed and sharpened and. Uh, I was just going to just hold his head like they do in boot camp. She's like, no, you got to use the biggest, you use the lot, longest setting, the biggest clip you have. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> and now he looks like he just walked out of Auschwitz, except he was a little bit fed better. So, yeah, it's not a good look for him. But, yeah, I'll give it a, you know, a week and it'll look okay. It'll look sort of normal. But he does look kind of raggedy well he's got like four thousand cow licks so it's not easy to like you know cut his hair are you talking about your son or the dog uh <laughs> my, my my son he does he's got he's got like five on the back of his head and he's got my he's got this one that i have right here are you he's going got bald? this one yeah. what are you going bald uh look at my dad <laughs> here look down here where do you think <laughs> see, see the same hair I thought that was a requirement joining this network. <laughs> no. what, what I've been going that? bald since I was 18, and this is and I'm 40, about to turn 44. This is as far back as got my that's my father. All right, I, at least, I in mean, his 70s, I, and that's as far back as his hair has gotten. I cut, I shave my head. At least it's coming back. I mean, you guys, people, like, you, guys you people were born with hair, like yeah, everywhere. Technically. <laughs> Well, yeah, technically. I think yeah. I'm gonna. You know what? I, talking to sports, I, you know, since hunting season, I thought about just running on people's trail cams and thinking that they saw Sasquatch. <laughs> I would work if you want to well, shave that, your that, beard. That, that's, Dean's, that's Dean Cerny's job. Yeah, that is Dean's job. But she made a he made a great point here in the comments talking oh, about yeah. the Oregon game. He's like, "Well, they made they made coke legal, but straws are still banned. So good luck with the, getting that up." <laughs> that shit up here. Well, I, I don't think I, I think it was a movie I watched or article I read or both that there isn't a single uh, active um, legal tender paper currency, which is not paper. I know it's not. It's it's a fiber, but. Uh, uh, without a trace of uh, cocaine or, or some kind of drug on it. So, you know, hey, people will find a way, I assure you. Um, I, I'll, I'm definitely going to talk about this on the bar on Wednesday. I'm not going to talk about it tonight, but it's definitely a topic for, for the bar because I find it very interesting. I'm very interested in waiting on beta breath to see what happens. Um, all right, T. Uh, anything else? 
Yeah, I got four more games that we got. Four more. Let's go. Let's finish it up. All right. So, yeah, we're moving on to Blacksburg, Virginia, where the number nine Hurricanes found themselves down in the fourth quarter, 19 to 24. But that's when quarterback Mark the High Pope hooked up with D'Eric the Tiger King on a 36 yard (laughs) touchdown pass. Where was Carol Baskins? (laughs) The Canes defense held off and narrowly escaped defeat as the Canes beat the Hokies. 25 to 24. Then we move on. We move on to Cincinnati, a game that was never in doubt in Cincinnati. The Bearcats mauled the Pirates behind quarterback Desmond, the Riddler. And I wrote his last name down. Oh, no, it's Ritter. (laughs) Riddler, the Riddler. I screwed that one up. Let's, Let's start over. All right. The game behind quarterback Desmond, the Riddler, Ritter, and his 327 passing yards and three touchdowns while rushing as well for 75 yards and another touchdown. The Bearcats defense ailed Eastern Carolina quarterback Holton Ehlers and forced him into three interceptions, and the Bearcats beat the Pirates 55-17. to Then in Gainesville, Florida, quarterback Kyle Trask is on track for a Heisman contention passing for 356 yards and a whopping six touchdowns in a high-scoring affair. Arkansas quarterback Felipe Albee Franks tried to keep pace, but only mustered two touchdown passes oh, as the Gators swallowed the Razorbacks 63-35. to You see what I did there? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> it, was, yeah we it, it was real up. cheesy. Yeah, we picked it up, brother. <laughs> We picked it up. We're picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> and finally, the number two Notre Dame Fighting Irish. The Fighting Irish rallied behind Ian, best selling book, and his three touchdown passes and fought off the ball, fought off Boston College 45 to 31 to improve the 8 0 and expand on last week's big win over Clemson. Nice. And that's your top 25 rundown. Number Very one, good job, Alabama man. did not I'm play. Impressed. A pretty good run through, you know, one or two hiccups, but that was uh, well written, well covered. You, you nailed it all down. I was rolling through what I had on, on my notes up on, on my computer, and uh, yeah, you had it. You had it there. You had some good puns in there. You're very punny. I like puns. Yeah, so. I, that's what I figured I would do was try to throw some puns in there. Make try, try. You had like thirty. <laughs> or, or there's only twenty five teams. You had thirty puns. So I, <laughs> yeah, I think you I, accomplished I your mission forced, there, Marine. I forced them in there. Uh, you didn't force them. They all worked. Yeah. I don't think any of them were forced. <laughs> there, were, there were some really good ones in there. Uh, Dean, I'll put it back up there again. Dean Stern says, I'm not saying that Bigfoot, but I will say that Bigfoot and I have never been in the same place at the same time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Uh, Gene Wasserberg, the sailor. He says, Irish play another cupcake. I fucking think I know what that is, but I'm not completely sure because I watched <laughs> well, the video. They, fighting Irish, yeah, they they played another. Oh, yeah, now, now I get it. Week. Now yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now I get they it. beat Clemson last Yeah, but, week, but so. that's, you know, that's... There's a funny thing. It, it, George will buy this. Dad will buy this. T will buy this. There is something about rivals and Boston, George had earlier. Boston College mm-hmm. always gives Notre Dame some shit. Uh, you know, um, the Bears and the Packers, uh, yeah. the Giants and the in in the Cowboys. The you know, name your rival: the Cubs and the White Sox, uh, the Dodgers and the Yankees, uh, the Dodgers and or the Yankees and the Red Sox. I mean, it doesn't matter where they are in in the rankings or how they're doing that year. Guys always seem to step up, which yeah. is yeah. awesome Rebel and annoying. Games. Yeah, <laughs> awesome and annoying. I mean, like playing semi pro, we had a better record against the in two years. We had a better record against the top two teams in the state of Indiana than we did at the bottom two teams, which above us because <laughs> we were the worst team. It, it, it was just annoying. I didn't understand it, but for some reason you got more focus, more locked in more heart, and I don't know why or where that comes well, you, from because you, you see, should be locked in every, all more. the time. What's that? You see each other more, so you know you know what to expect. Yeah, it's just experience. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's like, why do the Bears and the Packers hate each other? You know what I mean? It, it's just that, you know. Because we've been in the same conference for, you know, well, 100 years. Plus, they're what, 100 miles apart? Yeah. So, they, you know, they, they trade fans. So, it's just wow. Well, yeah, but you th- I don't think Chicago, I don't think the Cubs and White Sox trade fans because they're 4.3 miles apart and they hate yeah, each other. Well, no, that, that's a whole different subject there. That's, that's, I mean, they don't, number one, they don't play each other that often. And, and No. I, I've never been to, a, I've never, I've, I've been to one game at U.S. Cellular Field. I don't even know what it's called anymore. I just call it a cell block. I will never go to another game unless I have several bearded men around me that are armed. It's not called Comiskey Park anymore? No, yeah, it hasn't it's been for like 20 Park years. It's named for a company now. That's like, yeah, that, that's like the, Brewers, the Brewers are changing Miller Park to like AmFam Field or some shit next yeah. year, but it's going to be called Miller Park for the next you know 30 years. <laughs> Yeah, well, and you know the what? White Sox are always going to be Comiskey Park to me. <laughs> hey, uh, remember, remember when Charlotte became Lowe's Motors? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and and the broadcaster said they would not use the word Lowe's. Yeah. In the broadcast, and Humpy Wheeler went out and had an axe in his hand and was ready to cut the cable <laughs> to the network broadcast trailer, saying, "You will use the word." Lows. <laughs> well, prom- promoters they, are promoters, aren't they? And they, and they did. <laughs> promoters are promoters. Oh, uh, all right. Um, let me get into. Let me see if we can do here, to the a uh, little bit of ML, MLB. Not much to talk about except for the awards were finally handed down. Yeah. Uh, baseball's got some settles enormously this year, eventually crossing home plate with a few hiccups along the way. There was just enough to hand out awards, as is custom. Here's what you need to know about MLB's major awards as voted by members of the Baseball Writers Association of America, who I kind of admit that 51% of them are retarded, but uh, anyways, <laughs> that's not BC, but anyways... Uh, the NL, NL MVP, this one I very much agreed with. Winner, Freddie Freeman of the Atlanta Braves, a left-handed hitting first baseman. Uh, it was up between him and Mookie Betts. Um, yeah, I, I, I remember last week I thought Mookie Betts was going to get it. Just yeah. No, yeah, I was kind of leaning towards better. Mookie, too. Uh, imagine training a perennial MVP candidate. Betts hit 292 with 16 home runs in just 55 games this year. 55. Yeah. That's a year for a lot of players. A lot of good players, and especially mm-hmm. outfielders. Uh, it was his first year with the Dodgers. He, he got a huge uh, extension. He's going to be a Dodger for life. Uh, along with playing traditionally stellar defense, bets and mass a 3.5 or and a 3.0 F war this year. It's just brr, ridiculous. Freddie Freeman, however, with the Braves, and this is finally going to put it to the rest that he is underrated because he, he has been for a very long time, even though I kind of despise lefties because the earth rotation works in their favor. But anyways, uh, could this be there? Freddie Freeman finally breaks through? Yes. And he wins that elusive first MVP? Yes, it was. Slashing 341 with a 462. <laughs> slash 640 slugging percentage. 341 bad average, 462. On base percentage, 640 slugging percentage in 60 games. Freeman was the life of the Braves offense all season. Uh, Manny Machado came in there, but, uh, you know, I think Manny <laughs> didn't didn't get there because nobody likes Manny. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's not a tryhard. He, he, he's, he's an amazing talent. He reminds me a lot of, um, I'm trying to think of a Boston left fielder. Awesome. Manny Ramirez. Just blessed with ungodly talent. Just this ridiculous right-handed batter. But you never see him run out things. I just, I don't know. You know it's just disappointing. Uh, the AL MVP. Uh, <laughs> Jose Abreu of the White Sox. We yay. <laughs> uh, he had a great year, though. He really did. Abreu made good on accepting a qualified offer in 2019. He paced the majors in RBIs with 60. Total bases 148 and led the AL and hit 76 and slugging percentage at 617. He was second only to Luke Voigt in home runs at 19. So good on you. DJ LeMahieu, Yankees second. Jose Ramirez third. 
Uh, NL Cy Young went to Trevor Bauer with the Reds. The very first. Do you believe this, Pops? You're a Reds fan. Lifelong. You grew up here. He's the first Reds uh, Cy Young. Yeah, that's wild, but yeah. I mean, all you those know, championships and all that, that's crazy. Hey, do you know that there are five Marines in the uh, in the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame? I did not know that. So, um, Rod Carew. I know one of them was a Cub. Shut up. Ted Ted up. <laughs> shut up. Uh, I fucking Bert show. This guy Manning, tells me shut up. Go uh, ahead. Eddie Collins and Tom Seaver. Yeah, I know Tom uh, Seaver was. So there's five there are five Marines that are in the Major League Hall of Fame. We have to figure out how many other services have them in there because I, I had that stat if you want me to bring it up, but I had that for Veterans Day. But yeah, um, please bring it up. Um, well, let me get through this Scion uh, NL Scion thing. I want to get through these guys. Trevor Bauer, Trevor Bauer with the Reds. He had a 1.73 ERA, which is best in the NL, as was his 0.79. Whip, which is walks and hits per innings pitch. Bauer set himself for a nice offseason, which he'll be a free agent coming off the best season of his career. Weird. Uh, I guarantee <laughs> he won't be with the Reds. Uh, probably end up being a Cub uh, because they let John Lesser go. Uh, yeah, and the Cubs you, have the money to spend. No, they do. Yeah, they're one of the four teams that can blow money on free agents, uh, being the Dodgers, Yankees, and Red Sox. You uh, Darvish, the Cubs finished second. Uh, Jacob DeGrom with the Mets. Uh, after, you know, having, Jesus, winning it two years in a row, he's looking for his third. He just fell a little short. Um, I think they have a little goo goo gaga over Trevor Bauer, but whatever. Um, I was rooting for you, Darwich. I thought DeGrom was going to win. But, anyways, uh, AL Cy Young Award went to Shane Bieber of Cleveland. Uh, Bieber had a lot of bold and italics on his baseball reference page for 2020. It was utterly comically dominant year for Bieber. Over 12 starts, he led the majors in ERA, 1.63. Strikeouts, 122. And 12 starts. 12. All right, that's that's like a number three, number four starter all year. That's insane. So there was great there was great pitching throughout Ohio and nobody was allowed to see it due to COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at he had 14.2 strikeouts per nine innings. That's stupid. I don't even know if that's a record. I'd be I'd be shocked if it wasn't for a season if you, you know, prorated it out to an entire season. That's insane. That is just that's ridiculous. Uh, Kenta Matata with the Twins for the second, uh, and I'm not going to pronounce Win Ian Ryu of the Blue Jays came in third. NL Rookie of the Year, Devin Williams with the Brewers. Yay, team! <laughs> Finally! Williams was an absolute filthy out of the Brewers' bullpen, allowing a single earned run over 27 innings pitched on the pen. That single run came on a home run on July 27th. Holy shit. You know, if you're going to give a run, might as well be a dinger, right? Yeah, uh, right. His, his second appearance of the 2020 season. He didn't allow earn run the rest of the season. Alex Baum and Jake's uh, Cronsworth for the Padres finished second and third. AL Rookie of the Year winner Kyle Lewis of the Seattle Mariners. Uh, while Lewis made his major debut in 2019, his rookie season in 2020 showed seemingly limitless potential. Lewis hit 262 with 11 home runs and 58 games this season, tying the lead among league rookies. Uh, Lewis wrote of the White Sox and Christian Javier finished, respectively, second and third. And all manager of the year goes to the horrible last year Meyer Mamaros, but this year, they were pretty nasty behind Don Manley. Manley guided the Marlins to their first winning season since 2009. Holy shit. Yeah, I, that's nuts. That, that's probably the most obvious pick out of. Yeah, any, it, it was. I, said, when I was rooting, I, my hometown pick. So, my hometown pick was David. Hold on, let me finish this. Uh, and he helped navigate the potentially disastrous situation with the Marlins, suffering MLB's first major coronavirus outbreak. The Marlins finished second in the NL East behind the Braves. David Ross, Grandpa Rossi, led the Cubs to their first NL Central title since 2017 and helped restore a little bit of hope for the Cubs squad that looked like it was on a down swing since the 2016 World Series victory. And I'm going to admit to you and tell you all Cub fans out there, 
that uh, the Cubs you're going to see next year, they're not look anything like what you saw this year at all. Watch the winter meetings. I'm telling you, and I'm bringing in an expert. They are going to wheel and deal. The squad that won that World Series is gone. Uh, I don't know who's going to stay. Probably Rizzo. Probably Javi Baez. Other than that, they're gone. That that team is is. I mean, you Darvish is probably staying. Yeah, well, they still got him, but yeah, they still got him on a contract, but I think only for another year. Uh, AL Manager of the Year winner Kevin Cash of the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. Very deserved. The Rays showcased spunk, grit, and attitude en route to a 40 20 record, an AL East Division Championship, and eventually a World Series appearance. The team's 40 and 20 record was the best in the American League. And that's sort of a team that was just absolutely riddled with not only COVID, but just straight up ridiculous injuries. Uh, they've got probably – he's going to win the Rookie of the Year next year. And, uh, Arena Royes, uh, he's going to win the Rookie of the Year next year. I think he, he wasn't technically eligible for it this year because uh, a lot of games played. But uh, if you watched him in the World Series, ALCS or ALDS, this right-hander is just – he's a Cuban. Uh, he's just – holy Christ. Uh, he hit for power. He can hit for average. He can field. He can throw. He's got speed. He can base run. He's a five tool player, and he's going to be a household name here hopefully soon because he certainly deserves it. I I was I, even the wife was you know just like sitting on every seat every time he came up the bat every time a ball was hit to him. Um, and so that I'll tell you something. She loves baseball, but not as psychotically like me. And uh, even the boy was just kind of like looking back at the TV and looking at us and looking at the TV and looking at us like, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? I'm like, I don't know. Wait, James, he's going to do something. And he he just did damn near every time. He was very impressive. I don't think the Rays would have made it as far as he did without him. I, I don't think there's any question about that. All right, George, what you got on your mind, brother? So I, I got a question for you, you know, for the, the baseball season because I was kind of intrigued that they played 60 games. Mm-hmm. So the Rays would have been – they would have been 107 – and 55 this year had they played a, a full season. Do you think they would have been able to keep up that pace and win 107 games? Well, considering they got all the injury bugs early, right away, kind of like, you know, I got my Article 15 out in my first year uh, and did get another one and still got a good contact medal. Yeah, I think they could have kept it up. Um, it's still a very young team, and, and they're still going to be very nasty next year. Boston's still in a rebuilding thing. The Yankees are always going to be something to deal with, but because they could just throw cash at every problem they have, mm, right. and uh, but Tampa Bay doesn't, so they have to focus on development and wise trades. And uh, yeah, I, I think they could have kept it up. I mean, they, they literally had like <sighs> Jesus, they had somebody go down every couple of days for the first couple of weeks of the season. And then and they kept it, they kept the ship afloat long enough for every piece to come back healthy. And every piece they right. got a little bit better. And they had another piece they yeah. got a little bit better. And, and they were and they just the and then at the end of the stretch, they just they just fucking destroyed it. Shit, they were an eight and a half game lead when they went well, to the playoffs. The other thing you know? is, is that they were consistently the one thing I, I, you know, like I said, I, 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 baseball is one of my favorite sports. If I could have hit an inside fastball, I would have <laughs> never fucking wrestled. <laughs> I, I mean, it just, <laughs> you know. Hey, I didn't hit many of them either, brother, so no worries. Well, I know, but you had an arm. I didn't. So. <laughs> but they, uh. Oh, uh, wrestling's fun, though, man. I, I wouldn't want to give up wrestling for baseball. I would. <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Bryce Harper made forty six million dollars in like two years. Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah for, if you're talking monetarily yeah. a lot, for yeah, forty six million, no I would have been. I would have been baseball been very, very good to me. And th- think about it, like you know, I I told James when I brought him I home, like, I said you know, even if you I said James, even if you end up being a a, le- a relief pitcher, I said by the time you're a relief pitcher, you're probably making you know, ten million dollars a year. You're gonna to have to go to work maybe forty times a year, and all that combined, you're probably gonna to have to work about six, seven hours. So just think right. about that, boy. That's the best. Like, it's the best gig in sports. It is to be a left-handed reliever in baseball is the best gig in sports. If you can throw eighty-five miles an hour, 
throw two pitches. If you go to three, it's even better. And you can throw them for strikes. You can make, right now, you can make three to $5 million a year and go to work. We well, go to work, but you go to work 182 or 162 times a year, but right. you only you actually have to work and get on the floor maybe 40 of those times and maybe for five minutes at the most at sometimes. It's the best gig in sports, period. Nobody's going to hit you in the head. I mean, you might have that one freak ball come at you, so – Make sure you don't throw anything belt high and over the center of the plate, uh, but uh, or outside of the plate because on a right-handed batter because they're going to pull it right at you. But uh, yeah, best gig in sports ever, ever. Race car driving is great. I love it. I wish I could have done that, but I would rather have been a major league baseball player. Hell yeah, I love football. Would I love to be a quarterback? Yeah, but do I want a 290-pound angry black man hitting me in the face? No. <laughs> no. When I could yeah. just have him. But, just, but no. golf, is still, golf is definitely non-contact and good money. Yeah, but. The problem is there's only about 80 guys that can do it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like well, I baseball's not that much golf. different. Baseball's not that much different anymore. But being still. Tank. Sorry. It, it's baseball. I mean, you know, golf is like 15 minutes of excitement crammed into three hours. <laughs> Ooh, sh- I'm going to give some shout outs here. Gene Wadsworth says the bear sucks. Uh, Shannon Libro says, sup, y'all. Uh, she says, what's up, Minnie? Jane's in here. What's up, Jane? How are yeah. you doing, sweetie? Sorry, I missed you in the comment. You know, I've been running my I've seen game. a new person I've never seen before. It's a little bit further up. Oh, um, uh, I must have missed it. But uh, Dean says, Mini through baseballs, Cole. George through people. <laughs> about right. Cole, Hez- Cole Hezebix. Does anybody know who that is? Because I've never no, seen that. That's still my favorite team. comment of the night, though, right there. Mini through baseballs, George through people. <laughs> but, you know, it's true. We, and I got to tell you, you know what I loved about going to the, what, when, not now anymore because it's just not the same. But when I was younger, we used to go to the, uh, the Reds, and they had the gentleman's, you know, the 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 businessman specials. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you can go there, and beers were like five bucks. And you know, the, I mean, you can go to the, you could go there on a Tuesday afternoon, you know, and you could get crushed for like. Is yeah. this river? Was this Riverfront? Riverfront day or yeah, or yeah. Riverfront? yeah, Riverfront. Yeah. So okay. you could go and sit in the bleachers and be on. It, it would be down the third third base side, um, almost to the you know where the 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 foul you know the, the foul yeah. ball was, um, you know all the way down there, and and get, seats were like fifty five bucks, um, and and now those same seats are like one hundred and fifty hundred you know yeah. you can still go to some of them really cheap, but. Um, What's well, good about the businessman specials? You go there on a, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and you know the, everything was relatively cheap. I mean, you could go, you know, get you know a couple beers, you know, a couple fourteen beers, and um, <laughs> you know, more math, right? And that's finest. why I go to minor league baseball games. <laughs> oh, I got to tell you, you know, I go to see the Clippers here, um, you know, the, at the Huntington you know, at the Huntington Park, and they they it, it is. At, they do a really good job of, you know, one beer is cheap for a ballpark, <laughs> but they do a really good job of the entertainment value. So, <clears throat> sorry, um, but it, it's it's easy to park down there. You go there, you you, you go watch a game, and it, and and the Clippers are pretty, you know, they're you know pretty competitive, so. Oh, I love minor league baseball, man. I mean, I I, I love it. I, I it's it's great. I mean, it's just you know it was just, you know three or four or five steps above where I played, but um, no, I what, loved it. What's you know, the team in Northern Kentucky, John. What's that? What the team? Oh, in Freedom. Kentucky? I think it's Freedom Field, something like that. Yeah, it's right. It's right off the highway, right right yeah. in Florence. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you the other. Well, you know, a beautiful that, ball field there. Yeah, just, it's uh, a nice place to go watch spots. baseball. I you know what my favorite? Oh, go ahead. I was going to say something to Pops. I just saw something the other day that made me think of you guys. Uh-oh. So they've got a new thing out in the desert. I don't know if you've seen this, but.
but they look like outlaw sprint cars that yeah. are racing in the desert. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and these things, you know, you know, like how they have the side by sides, the you know, the 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 big cars. Right. These are the little cars, and they're racing in you know places like I don't know Baja or whatever. And yeah. these little things are getting up and getting it. <laughs> and they're just little, you know, they're just, they look like outlaw cars. Like they, you know, they, they have an Eldora, yeah. um, except that they're in the desert and they, you know, they got them a little modified with, you know, the, the knobby tires and stuff, right. but these guys are out there getting it. And I'm like, that actually looks pretty fun out there. Well, that, that's where, that's where Jimmy Johnson came from. That's what, how outlaw? he started out racing. Yeah. In dune yeah. racing or outlaw? Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he uh, raced. No, the old laws are. He, he raced. Uh, they were revel really starting. He started out in like dune buggies, but then went went to trucks and and uh, then from went from there into ASA. He moved to Wisconsin to run ASA. Mm -hmm. uh, and from there, he went down to Charlotte and and uh, I think one year in in Bush, and then he moved up into into Cup and you know seven titles later there there he is. <laughs> Fuga Censorship says that sounds like combat. 47 and a half hours of boredom and 30 minutes of sheer excitement. Yeah. <laughs> That's you called know, a baseball game, brother. We, we had a <laughs> or baseball series. I mean, like, yeah. Uh, oh, we man. had a really good, I got to tell you this year, we had a, even with COVID, we had a really good Marine Corps birthday. And uh, so, yeah, they, where's my invite? I invited you there, Dickwad. No, you didn't. Yeah, did I fucking I we had a thing over a Facebook post here. Oh, oh. But Facebook I, post, because I'm on Facebook all the time. Oh my god. <laughs> so I gotta tell you a funny story. The parlor's story. worth that now, man. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you a funny story though about the, one of the guys that we have that uh, that comes up to the Marine Corps birthday. And uh so the guy's name is uh Doug Kirk, and he's he's a Way City vet. And there's a video of his squad on YouTube. If you guys ever want to see something cool, and What's it's got name? Uh, Doug Kirk. But if you go on, on YouTube, it's uh, just YouTube this video, Antos Way City. And they had, and he was sitting there talking about this. He said these two guys and with the Antos came in there, and they retired more via Kong than Social Security. <laughs> 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 he goes so they they the one on to say and there's video of his squad over there in way city and they're at the at the ohio university campus there and the 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 two autos come in like this side alley and what they have one of them's got a quad 50 cal on and they Ooh. just they just said you know we're gonna we're just gonna shoot everything and it, it was a it was a really good birthday. He he's a real regular, but um, you know it, it, it's funny how I, I got to tell you something. It, it's funny how a lot of um, a lot of former servicemen um, go into athletics, and now not. I, I mean I don't know if it's as many. Like we don't have um, the one thing that I, I'm really happy that Trump passed was the NFL rule for the academies. That if you get drafted in the NFL and you you know you they you can put your military career on hold yeah. if, if you want to go play in the NFL, um, you know Roger Staubach, uh, it, it's H U E Way Way City. It's uh, um, <laughs> Hotel Uniform Echo, and and oh my God, you know listen. Um, you, you know, you guys ought to study history, how we got to know, you know the Marine Corps. I, I mean, seriously, We're you know. Fuka's a brat. Fuka's a brat. Fuka's an Army guy, and Dean's I know. Uh, well, Sailor, it, so. He's an Alabama fan. That's all right. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, oh, you guys are bad. <laughs> so, no, but I mean, it, it's funny how um, when I, you know, when when I was in the Marine Corps, I got to see David Robinson play the Marine Corps team in basketball, and he scored like fifty five points at like I don't know and a half, and 
<laughs> and one of the one of the dudes was like on, on the Marine Corps team. He's like, "Fuck, I'm the other guy on the Jordan poster." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny, you know. But it, it, it's funny how uh, um, that's all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna take your trains and sell them for a buck a piece. <laughs> that, that's funny. That, that's a you know. Um, no, but it, but it's funny how you know at. Athletics has been able to. Uh, I, I'm even though it's struggling right now for a lot of athletes. Like one of the things that's oh. going on, right? Like last night, I got to tell you what happened last night. Um, this is not that you guys care about it, but I thought it was great. Jordan Burroughs won um, a wrestling match, uh, so he beats the Heat. And Jordan Burroughs is, is has been around for 12 years at his prime. And he has been able to be competitive now. And, you know, at the London Olympics, he was a gold, you know, gold medalist. But he has been able to compete for a long time at the top. And last night he beat Zahid um, 8-5 to five, um, at the, you know, the, t- you know, the wrestle, uh, you know, Team Wrestle USA. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they delayed the Olympics until 2021, in, in, you know, in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. I hope, I really do hope, I, I mean, this is, this is my... Um, this is my. I, I hope we find a solution to have a full Olympics next year because oh, a lot yeah, of these, me too, man. A lot Get- of these these kids and you know these guys that are training for the Olympics, um, they will never see. You know, the the money is never going to be there for the them. opportunity is going to go away. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and you only have a limited amount of time where you could be in that competitive window. And Mark and Mark Spitz. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm guessing. Mark, I'm guessing. Actually, talking about this, though, that Minnie actually probably was able to follow this a little bit because I know I've heard Joe Rogan talk about this before with uh, Burroughs, Jordan Burroughs. I know his well, name, name has come up. Jordan Burroughs is an exception. I, I mean, he's a he's just a freak. He yeah. is. Um, but one of the things that that happened in wrestling. And, and especially over the last, uh, you know, they, they took down some weight classes. And so when I was competing, we had 10 weight classes. We had from 105 to heavyweight. And now they're, you know, they've cut out to, you know, they've cut out some of the weight classes. And so what it's done is it's going to take athletes that would have had a shot at being at the Olympics have to gain weight or cut weight. To, which you know, is fucking stupid. But yeah, anyways. which is stupid. Um, and I, and I, and if you can have this, you know, here's the thing, if you can have the same weights in boxing, have the same weights in, in wrestling, you know, come to agreement. The, the problem is that one of the, one of the things that, that the U S does different than other countries is we don't have a national Olympic committee. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you're an athlete, let's say you're training, you're in Russia, let's just use Russia for a prime example. If you're training for wrestling, you live at the at the at the Soviet sports clinic. You live free steroids. Um, yeah, but but it, they're not. You know, it's not just Russia. I mean, France does it. Other countries. I know. I get it. And here in the U.S., we we don't we don't do the same thing. You know, people are independent. Um, we have clubs. I mean, you know, you have the New York AC, um, New York Athletic Club. You have Santa Monica Track Club. You do have clubs out there, but they're not quite the same. And we're discussing this. There are a lot of countries that their their amateur athletes are treated as professionals. So if all you had to do was train for your sport, um, how much better would you be? Yeah. How much better would you be? And right now, in, in the twenty twenty one in the twenty twenty one Olympics. I think there's a record that is going to be broke that I want to see this of all the rec- there's only one record left it, that I want to see broke and that's the uh, uh, the clean and jerk um, and every time I see that I want to fuck it I'm like, yeah. I, I just watch my shoulder coming out just <laughs> yeah which mine had already has so <laughs> well <laughs> it's gonna be even worse this year. The the old the, this the record right now is one of the old is the, the guy that holds the record is from 1988 is a guy by the name of Leonid Taranenko. He did 586 pounds. 
in oh, no. 1988. Now, um, there's a guy by the name from Georgia, and this guy is an incredible athlete. His name is L Lasha Talakadze, and the guy's huge, and he's done. He's gotten clo close to it. He had said in an interview that he thinks he can do 600 in a clean and jerk. Um, and yes, you can. Fucking uh, dream team, they're idiot. Um, <laughs> God, army. No, what, what, you, what you Wait, no. jerk, let me ask a question. Clean and jerk is, is well, it depends what sport, and then jump uh -huh. under it. Yeah, clean and jerk, you, you got to get it to your chest and then you got to put it up. Um, the clean and snatch, you got to lift it over your head. I, I mean, and you do it with a wide thing from the yeah. bottom. The Lasha Talakadze has is the world record holder right now, and um, he is. Right now, he's got the the heaviest um, he the he clean and jerk on film is he's at five hundred eighty eight um, point six pounds. Now that's on film. He no and no human. This is you want to you want to talk about interesting uh, sports dynamics. No human being has ever pressed six hundred pounds over their head. Hmm. And that is yeah the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, and so <laughs> well, we're getting will. bigger, stronger, and faster um, as we go on. Yeah, but that, that's one of those things that it, it, it's it, it's you know there's no equipment to help you. No, in in 1985, else. I, I'm going to give you an example. 1985, a guy by the name of Ted Orsini benched 705. He's the first human being to ever benched over 700 pounds. Jesus Christ, that's stupid. Yeah, Mendelssohn uh, today, they, they're, they're people that have benched. I, I'm going to pull him up. I, I think uh, the heaviest bench right now is 11. Uh, Scott Mendelssohn has um, um, uh, let's see. I remember trying to get ready for the Marine Corps and being happy six months beforehand to be able to press plates. <laughs> to do what? Plates. To bench plates. Yeah. I'm there, happy there about is... that. And then before I got there, before six months later, because I learned to take a week off, a week on, and work on other shit on my arms, uh, I got to 225 before I got in the Marine Corps. Right. And that, that saved me in the sandbox more than anything else did in my time. Well, that and a lot of sit-ups, but that saved my ass in the sandbox because. So, Will Barodi just did 1,105. Uh, <laughs> but that's what, you know, that is with equipment and that, you know, that, that's with equipment and everything else. But here's one of the, the reasons that the clean and jerk, um, um, Alexiev in 1972 is a first well, How long? Uh, so you clean it. You pull it up to your chin. You or up, chest. Well, you got to pull it up to here and then settle it there. And then you got to get it over your head. Now, how long do you have to hold it? Um, two it's seconds. It's going to be steady, isn't it? Yeah. Three, gotta, isn't it? Three. It's got to be on the third second. They'll give you the green light. You can drop yeah. it. Um, and so the first time anybody ever did over 500 pounds, was in Columbus, Ohio, and that was an, um, Alexia did that in 1972. That he did it in the Olympics, but since then it's only gone up 88 pounds. The reason yeah. is you, you you just can't use equipment now. With with in in powerlifting, they have the records are now they're they're raw, which means no no equipment, and then you have single ply and 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 two. Um, Two ply, and two ply means that you wear. Um, What's up, uh, Richie? How you doing? Hey, Richie. Um, that, uh, um, and then one of the things with it is that the new equipment that's coming out is just incredible. So it it helps you be able to, you know, you got a a, a shirt. That is able to, you know, give you two, three hundred pounds. Equipment. What are you talking about? Equipment. Well, <laughs> it, it, you wear, like, for example, on the bench, you wear what's called a bench shirt, and a mm -hmm. bench shirt um, 
it is a a shirt that you you literally have to wrap yourself in and mm-hmm. it's and it it is it's got so much torque on it that it's like having an exoskeleton help you bench all right and that is why you know they have raw records and it's the same thing with the squad suits the squad suits are made out this kevlar you know you 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 literally got to have somebody help you get into it right um and as a result of it you know the gear is doing a lot of the work or not that you know not the lifter is yeah it comes down more technique than than yeah and then but the difference in in olympic lifting in a clean and jerk and the you know the clean and snatch there's just no equipment you can use and so a lot of these guys are saying you know those are the you know the the real you know what people consider the real lifters um the problem with what's going on now is that in a lot of the powerlifting meets they're you know now they're they're going back to you know what is single ply and two ply you know it, they're breaking down the records that way um and one of the things that's going on with the olympics has been is the sanctioning bodies of the olympics can't get along in across every every country so the most I, i'll give you an example of this what do you think is the most practiced sport in the world? What what countries have the the what sport is practiced in the most countries? Soccer. No. Oh, uh, really? God, I don't know. Soccer. No. I just uh, said that. Oh, did you? <laughs> I didn't. I was I was looking for the answer. I wasn't even listening hey, George, to you. Did anybody say soccer? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Judo is practiced in more countries. Soccer has the most participants. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, there are more. There are more countries that have judo as a, a that practice judo and have a judo sanctioning body than any other sport. Soccer is played by more people, or you know, football yeah. is played There's by more, more people. Yeah. More people around the world, but there are countries that don't have a sanctioning judo uh, sanctioning soccer. Player. Hey, football's that popular? All right. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, but the reason I say that is the because of the way that different sports sanction each other um this you know like how you have the wbc the wbf and boxing ibf and all them is you know it's about money and one of the reasons that you had some of these these boxing organizations come out of there was so they can come up with their own champions and and have you know championship fights well it's the same thing that's happened in the olympics they can't agree the olympics cannot always agree on what what the rules are for the sport so you know a lot of the times when you have and i'll give you a prime example Mm -hmm. um the basketball that there's played in the olympics there are things that one of our you know when we had the dream team in 92 some of the rules that that um they had to play by they were never they never saw the rules before yeah. oh yeah oh no yeah there's a lot of call and, rules everything like that hey we got to move on i got to get one more segment in then we can, we can we can go long if you want george but i got to get pops uh uh auto racing segment in so well how about we do this since uh i mean i can uh do, 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 do. okay um do you want to go I, I was going to go on tonight for a little bit, but if you want to, you know, let's go with Pops. And maybe we can go to 930, and if you're up to it, then we'll call right, it tonight. Sounds good. All right. Go for All it, right. Pops. Well, uh, the first thing we want to talk about is what just ended up in the Formula One. They finished their season, uh, and Lewis Hamilton won his seventh world championship, which is just, Weird. just incredible that, that he is able to do that. Uh, that ties Michael Schumacher's record. We all let you know Michael's not coming back to get an eighth. But no. I think uh, Hamilton is still negotiating with Mercedes as far as what he's going to do next year. So uh, <laughs> I, you know I, he's I, not leaving. You know he's not. I mean, it doesn't doesn't Mercedes know that he doesn't have as much levers as he thinks he does? Because where is he going to go with the, that money, the team, the development, the engine, everything they have in the car? Well, but see, don't forget. That money that limited 145,000, 145 million, excuse me, 145 million is the budget next year. Um, that does not include driver salaries. Uh, so uh, you're still you're still looking at 
uh, he, he can get upwards of 100 million. And anyway, fucking um, Christ. He, 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 is a, he is a phenomenal. I mean, number one, the, the car is awesome. But, yeah. you know, he's got, a, he's got a, a teammate, and he's whacking the heck out of his teammate every, every race, too. So, um, oh, of, and everyone before him, since he's been on Mercedes, he didn't get along yeah. with Nico Rosenberg either, did he? No. So, I mean, no. he, 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 is, he has two minutes. He, he's got a screwed up head. But <laughs> I think that comes with, with the talent he's got. He's allowed to be crazy, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, does that come with it a little bit? I, I mean, to I be think, that excellent? I, I think because he has been so successful. Uh, I mean, it's just like the, the, the kids coming in out of high school and, and college. You just keep going until you find out you can't go any further as far as getting away with something. Right. And that's Lewis. Is he, he's been able to get away with anything ever, you know, ever since he started. So as long as you're winning, right? Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. All right. But anyway, the Turkish Grand Prix was was really really enjoyable. There's no ifs ands or buts. Um, they resurfaced the track um, like a week before the the F1 got there, and it was unbelievably slippery. So then on top of that, it rained. <laughs> ah, nice. And, and so. Now you remember uh, the uh, Lance Stroll, the uh, the guy that got the ride because his dad bought the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, he went out and earned his very first pole position. So that w- that was kind of awesome. They, he finally did something well. Now he didn't finish well, but but uh, yeah. he, he, at least, he at least won the pole. And uh, you know, it, I guess here's the thing. I guess he is qualified. Number one, number two. His dad's never going to get rid of him, so <laughs> he's sticking around. Uh, the The neat part about it was Racing Point, which is the team he drives for, uh, their chassis is basically the same thing as Mercedes. They just copied everything. The difference being is that they don't have the downforce on their car aerodynamically as, as Mercedes does, and so they were able to run in the rain because they didn't have the downforce to begin with. So they were they were used to slide slipping and sliding all over the place. Sure, sure, yeah. But uh, eventually, it came around to, you know, the, the cars finally worked up to the top. You had Hamilton winning, uh, Sergio Perez in a racing point. That's the team I was talking about. It's got the Mercedes type chassis, and then Sebastian Vettel in uh, in a Ferrari finished third. So uh, Leclerc, Leclerc, uh, and another Ferrari was fourth. So I mean, it was it was it, it all balanced out. But it was funny that that uh, one of the drivers, and this is a this kid is, is a good kid, uh, George Russell, was complaining because he said it was not fair to the fans. They did not see F1 racing because you know we're the best drivers and we got the best cars, but we didn't get to put on the best show. <laughs> and uh. As far as I'm concerned, the best drivers and the best cars were all on the same track, and if they didn't see what they wanted to do. I'm sorry about that, but the, you know you're you're in the same ballpark. Yeah. But anyway, that's what was going on in there. Now, getting back to F1, uh, their season is over. Haas F1 team can both drive. So remind the Haas Formula One team fired both their drivers. Um, and and then they let them know before the end of the season that this was going to happen. Uh, both Romain Grosjean and uh, Kevin Magnussen, uh, you know, they 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 uh, they have come out and said, "Hey, we're going to take a look at IndyCar." So uh, Grosjean is over here negotiating. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Magnussen is going to end up in, in uh, the, e, the electric cars. No, E one uh, cars. Yeah, he, he's a lot younger, so he's got yeah. a lot, you know a lot longer to a lot longer to go. But uh, it was it was neat to see that they they actually considered IndyCar. Um, oh, uh, real quick, um, sure. I want to answer a fan's question. Uh, it's uh, Richie the Redneck Pit, R- Richie the Redneck Pit King. <laughs> He's uh, from uh, the World Radio Entertainment Network and the World Radio Show, which you catch every Tuesday at twenty hundred Eastern Standard Time, I believe. So, uh, also. Follow their website. He's a stand-up comedian. He's a great guy. He's very funny. You have seen him in person at Warrior Fest last uh, uh, Veterans Day. 
he asked who is the highest paid driver in auto racing, and that is Lewis Hamilton at $36 million a year. Yeah. Who is currently negotiating for more. So, well, yeah, and, th and that doesn't, that does not include his, his outside income from his sales. So, endorsements and sales yeah. and everything like that. And he lives in Monaco, which he doesn't pay any uh, income tax for. So, well, we are talking about I think, that. Uh, I think <laughs> What's that? We already talked more, about that. He yeah, doesn't I know. pay any to yeah. Monaco. No, so Monaco. Yeah. He, he, he track it. Yeah. Countries yes. where he earned it, he ends up paying there. Yeah. Because they, they, they all. But it's better out. living in, in London. Los Angeles and New York can do it. We can too. Yeah, it's better living in London, though, right? Yes. Oh yeah. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think Wolf Radio I mean, is on. I from mean, you know, you can do that in, in Las Vegas or in Florida. So. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, my mistake. Uh, Wolf Radio every Tuesday at eighteen hundred to twenty hundred. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I think they start at eighteen hundred. Right. I'm sorry, pops. Please continue. All right. Um, the, what came next, or what what also finished this weekend, was the uh, twelve hours of Sebring. Um, the the neat part was is that they had uh, Mario Andretti as the Grand Marshal. Uh, they they flew him in on the Honda jet. Now the Honda jet is is like an eight passenger jet. Uh, it, it's all decked out nice and G6. red and yeah. white, and got Honda all over the side. But anyway, they flew him in. Honda flew him in, uh, and and the the picture they got of him, he. he Comes across just like a, the, a Godfather picture. <laughs> Where are you? Because he, he is. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He is. <laughs> he right. is. He's, a, he's the greatest driver of the 20th century, arguably. Arguably. The greatest yeah. driver. Of anyway, uh, he, he, had, he had won uh, uh, Sebring 12 hours, I think, in like 69, 70, and 71. So, I mean, Mario had an excellent record in, in uh, 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 the GT racing down there. Um, the other thing that happened was that uh, Elio Castroneves, after 20 years of trying, finally wins the championship in IMSA. Woo! Uh, his team won. His team won the season. Uh, they, I think, they finished like sixth in, in the race, but uh, uh, that was enough to give them the, the first championship, to Elio. Uh, and that is the last race that Elio will be driving for uh, Roger Penske. Uh, Roger Penske is is. Uh, has given up the uh, the Acura team. Uh, that's gone over to a couple other guys that are going to be going to running the Acuras. Um, and so all of the Penske guys that you know, like Montoya and uh, uh, Briscoe and and uh, well, whatever they uh, they all, I should say, they're all finding other things to do uh, with their their time. I guess is the best way to say it because. They're not going to be racing for Penske anymore. Uh, that's sad, but I'm, I'm glad Elio got another one, another notch in his belt because yeah, he is uh, by he's, far he's one of my racing for the Meyer Shank Racing Team. He's got five races in IndyCar. And here's the other thing that's going on is Chip Ganassi is probably going to have one of the Cadillac Daytona prototypes. Oh, he, I think he's going to take that over. Now, you remember that he just hired Jimmy Johnson. Yeah. Yeah, he also has. Uh, um, well, he, he's got his share of road racers. Scott Dixon. Uh, yeah, and you know it could be Elio coming back to 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 be to race with because, Chip. You know, oh. uh, other, you know, Meyer Shank has racing teams in Insta, so who knows if they'll let him go across? But I mean, you look at look at the team that uh, uh, that that won the the, the championship th this year. It, it was uh, uh, oh mess! I can't remember his name. Anyway, uh, it was it was three different teams conglomerated together to drive for Penske. Uh, so I mean, it, there is no real loyalty in that in that end. They they will swap around and do that. So it, it will be interesting to see what comes of that. Ganassi had the uh, GT40 team two years ago and did an excellent job at at. at uh, Le Mans with the GT40s, but uh, Ford said that that's done. We're, we're done with that. We're not going to do any more of that of uh, that racing. Other than we'll sell you the cars. <laughs> Ford's so not involved Ford, in GT racing, racing anymore. No, no more enduro. They're, they're still GT40s racing, but Ford is not putting the bill for them. They'll sell you the car and they'll give you support. That so, uh, so that's the end of that. Uh, that, that. That's just what the you know what. The, 
the economy really changes this 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 COVID has really screwed up all of racing. Oh well, it screwed up everything uh, for sure. Yeah. You know, well, you look at all you know, Formula One. There's no there's no spectators. Oh yeah. Now, yeah. now granted, Formula One doesn't make the money off of spectators. <laughs> no. They make the money off of sponsors. No, uh, the promoters make it off the spectators, but well, ish ish. Yeah. Well, yes and no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's why I said ish. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, when you when you ask Indianapolis to pay fifty million dollars to have a race, <laughs> uh, that, that 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 that's crazy. But anyway, are they, uh, are they eventually price themselves out? They haven't. I mean, yeah, I know. If you keep, keep adding up. I mean. Is it? I mean, is it just now? Just a status symbol? Is it almost like the Olympics now? You just have it, and it's just it's just a thing, a, a notch on your belt. Because it seems like it, I mean, Silverstone has been in jeopardy for years, and they keep well, but, saving mean, it. But who comes up with the it, money to do it? Why? The Olympics was always a money loser for cities until Los Angeles, and then you know, then then they they realized, hey, we can make money off of this, and yeah. they did. And then Salt Lake City did it. So I mean. Uh, it, 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 Formula One, they they got this act together, and be, don't forget they do worldwide broadcasts, so they make a buco bucks off of that. Yeah, that's uh, true. And, and so that that's, I mean, the, the, is Hobbs still doing the broadcast for a last place team? You're getting a hundred million dollars from your sanctioning body. So, you know. is, is Hobbs <laughs> still doing the broadcast, or is he is he done? No, it's all it's all ESPN has got it. Oh, and uh, and they are just and they are just importing the uh, feed from England. So Sky oh, TV, yeah, Sky TV of, feed, their their personnel. Uh, so there's no American personnel on it whatsoever. It's just uh, it's just a repeat of what was on in England. All right, what else you got for us, Pop? Before we give George some time, because he's yeah, Kevin Harvick uh, came out. And remember, Kevin Harvick. Was the winningest driver in NASCAR this year? He didn't, didn't win the championship, championship, but he was the winningest driver. He's got a new driver uh, coming into the Newman Haas team. Not Newman Haas. <laughs> I don't know why. Hendrick? Stuart Haas. There we go. Oh, Stuart Haas. Stuart Haas team, uh, and that's Chase Briscoe. Now, Chase Briscoe, not to be mistaken with Chase Elliott, who just won the NASCAR Cup championship, but Chase Briscoe. Won nine races this year, in in Xfinity. Um, nice. And uh, so he he is coming in. Kevin Harvick says it's the smartest thing Stuart, Stuart Haas has ever done. So. <laughs> it, 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 it looks, it well, he's like, not he's not boisterous ever at all. I mean, the, both those brothers are a little have a little bit of chip on their shoulder. And never <laughs> hesitate to speak their mind, do they? Ever? No, 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 no. never, never. Then the so other thing is still a young enough organization that that really ain't saying too much. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing I wanted to bring up, and, and we, we can probably do this next week again, but uh, USMC Racing. Oh yeah, going to be. Featured on CBS Sunday morning on oh, December. Oh, son of a bitch! I mean, that, 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 that's national, <laughs> and that is unbelievable. Uh, yes. They were down racing in somewhere in Texas, or I think Houston, um, and CBS Sunday morning came down and uh, is doing a segment on. So you're looking at three to five minutes worth of USMC racing. I don't know what tack they're taking on it, but you know, USMC racing is just such a neat deal and got mm -hmm. such neat people. They had a terrible, they, they, they crashed one of the cars <laughs> before the green flag fell. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I hope that doesn't make part of the broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the but friends it, it, of the show, so we definitely got to get the uh, word out today. Yeah, on. we'll we'll get them we'll get them back on the bar. We'll get them back on Sports Church. We'll get Mister uh, 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 Mister Check. I say Mister because he's a warrant officer. He's 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 one he's of the not a warrant officer anymore. Oh, that's right. He's an LDO. Um, yep. Yeah, he's an LDO now. Um, but yeah, he's been a guest on uh, on the bar, and I, I believe on Sports Church as well, and. Uh, yeah, he's an awesome, awesome Marine, and his his job at USMC Racing is basically to get uh, uh, veterans into race cars and let them go crazy, and uh, yeah. it's a great he gets, thing. He gets veterans and, and first responders, and, yep. and uh, they had three cars going 
Uh, and I think they'll have two cars for a while. I think the third car is done for uh, done a minute. <laughs> well, it hit the, I think it hit why, a car all that, twice today. It so. pops? How come? Yeah. What's that? Why is the third car done for a while? I hit a tire wall well, twice. It, they cracked it big time. <laughs> uh, as far as it was a Mustang, and uh, they, they tweaked it so that it, it can't be untweaked. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What do but, you think? Uh, about and, that, and that's before they got the green flag. So. <laughs> what do you think about Lewis Hamilton? What do you think about him? He's awesome. He, he just, he just, he just, he's just a different personality. That's all. But he is, <laughs> is unbelievably talented, uh, unbelievably quick reflexes. But even he spun out today. So, uh, you know, it, it, I told you the surface was crazy, but uh, he is one of the world's best. He is the world's best right now. Oh, and yeah. again, you can't compare him like you were saying about the one generation to the next. You can't compare him to uh, Jimmy Clark or, or, you know, any of the other guys because it's a whole different ball game now. Well, I think also one of the things that, that too, you got to remember that, um, you know, when you're talking about eras, you know, I, I, I sat there the other day and we we're talking with, you know, and I'm going to have to get Mark on this show, but we were talking yeah, about, you um, I got to tell you something. I, I want to tell you a funny story. Um, I, I'll tell you a couple of funny stories. Um, one of my friends um, played football in Texas. Mm -hmm. And he played six on six football. Okay. And, and Texas is one of a few states. I think North Dakota, South Dakota is another one. Wyoming. Um, they play six on six football, and it, it's a it's a sanctioned um, sport. Yeah. And the academy. I'm not sure, I think they might do that in some of the Northwood areas here in Wisconsin, yeah. where they, they might. They might. There's not the population. Yeah, there's just yeah. not the population to make a full team. So one of the other sports that they have in in the that the U.S. Uh, uh, West Point has is called. Have you ever heard of uh, sprint football? Sprint football, not yeah. ultimate football. I play that. No, no, no. Play, uh. Uh, look it up. It's called sprint football. Uh, it, you weigh, I think it's under 160 pounds, and the academies have it. You know, like the. Um, um, like West Point has it, Annapolis yeah. has it, Columbia, and a couple of other. I, I, there's only a few sports that, that play. I, I could have done that when I joined the Marine Corps. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Double but, Reds. But anyway, <laughs> you know, people people talk about, um, you know, like we were talking about Mark, um, you know, the first UFC. One of the things that people, you know, he was in UFC 7. One of the first things that people don't realize is that, the rules dictate how the game is played. Sure. And, you know, when you had, um, you know, like in baseball, you know, the rules haven't changed that much in the last 50 years. You know, if you take a team from the 70s to play today, they'd still be competitive. Um, mm. Oh, big red machine. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Minnie. Mm. You know, I, I mean, you had to pitch to Griffey and, and, and Geronimo and and yeah. all those they they would have, they'd have hit they'd have been still been able to hit today. Pete Rose, oh, come on! You know that's an argument we should have. Uh, on baseball is, you know, we we'll pick. Uh, we'll, we'll have you and Pops pick your guys in your generation, and I'll pick my guys. Um, because I think uh, I'm gonna win. Because Ted Williams, I, hold on. You put, I'm going to tell you this. You know, that you put, is so surprising. <laughs> you put Ted Williams and Roberto Clemente in any era, and they're yeah. putting the bat on the ball. I don't care what. Yeah, yeah but you know, I don't think they ever saw Randy Johnson either. Um, I don't think they Bob Feller. They had Bob Feller. Yeah. He never no, no. threw 101 miles an hour. Bob Feller threw 105 miles an hour. Well, mm, okay. okay. All right. They have Bob Feller. They also had guys that, you know, um, and Ted Williams had 2015, 2015 vision. He'd have hit yeah. the ball. And uh, yeah, he would have. Ted would have. Okay. Yes. Okay. He's an out, he, but your favorite, one of your favorite words, an outlier. Uh, yeah, he. Yeah. But he, he's also my favorite baseball player. Yeah. In Robert, Roberto Clemente was a beast, and he was just taken to, from us too early. 
Yeah. yeah. No, no, for for the, the, trying, we're, trying to do the Lord's work. Just anybody like I was know talking what, about at the beginning of the show what my uh, wife's it, family's doing? Anybody know what Ted Willie's number was? No. Eight. Are you sure? I thought it was eight. Hold on. No, it was 21. Uh, by the way, and, and the reason for that had is eight. Because my number was 21. <laughs> hey, so, Minnie, you, you, you want to have that silly argument about uh, uh, about Randy Johnson? Um, yeah. I, I I dare you to put to put some hitters against Sandy Koufax and Bob Gibson. Yeah. Oh, well, with those hey, rules with I love, rules. Well, different mountain, yeah, but too. But you know, I, I love Bob Gibson. You know, you know, you know what Bob Bob Gibson quote. My favorite quote from Bob Gibson is, "You know, what his most important pitch was what strike one." <laughs> yeah, I love that dude. He was nasty you know, as shit. You got the first one in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you got them. You get the first strike in. It's it's you, all the advantage turns to the pitcher. And unfortunately, that is not the game anymore. Now everybody's so obsessed with guys who can throw 100 miles an hour, 96 miles an hour. Where you know you had guys like Greg number. Maddox Where's and Tommy Greg Glavin who could, couldn't break a pane of glass with their fastball. But they could put their fastball at 85, 86, 87 miles an hour at any point in the strike zone they wanted to. Yeah. Ted Williams' number was number nine. I thought it was eight because it always looked like that, but he was number nine. Yeah. All right, not 21. I think so. he was, I don't know if he's the only, but I remember him hey, definitely up, hitting a hitting home run in his last at bat. But anyway, going back to, going back to what we were saying, yeah. the rules dictate the game. And let's say that you put, Let's say one of the rules that they changed in the NFL, they, why you needed bigger linemen, was because the chop blocks. Yeah. And so in the 70s, if you were to let, you know, one of the reasons that you, you had short NFL careers was you had chop blocking and guys were blowing out their knees. And in five years, you know, three years, they're out of the league. And yeah. so the NFL said, hey, maybe this isn't a good idea that all our players are getting hurt. Um, and then you had players like, um, you know, Stickham, who uh, Lester Haynes, who <laughs> you know was making interceptions at the elbow. Yeah, um, they were like, well, maybe Stickham isn't the the, the you know the, the thing to wear. And I and and so I think that if you look at it, playing under those rules, I think athletics is athletics. Um, but it's just like the UFC when it, the UFC stopped letting wrestlers wear wrestling shoes and um, took the headbutt out, that completely changed the way the, the ground game looked. Yeah. And, and so I think that if you, you know, you look at what the UFC has become today um, and it's the same thing with what boxing has become. When, when you made bigger gloves, right? If you ever watch my, my favorite boxer of all, well, not my all time. I have a few all time favorites, but, one of my favorite boxers is a guy by the name of Archie Moore, the guy, the mongoose. Mm -hmm. And he, one of the things that he used to do is he used to throw a right hand from his chest. So instead of coming out from here, he, he'd tuck it under his, and he would just throw it straight out. Well, when they, they made boxing gloves heavier, one of the things that that led to was more concussions and, or, you know, uh, brain injuries because you're getting hit all the time where it, it, you know when when they had the lighter gloves you had 10 you, you had less punches you had you know and when you got hit you just got knocked out and um i think one of the things that uh that um it scorebook from 60s baseball. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> Dean, um, you definitely gotta send that to me, brother. That oh my god. I mean, I'm, I'm one of the thing. few guys who actually screwed up a scorebook on opening day at Wrigley Field because I got too hammered, but I would definitely love to see a scorebook from the 60s. But. You did? I, and and one of the things that I think that it, also <laughs> one of the things that's hurt uh sports in the US in the last I'd say in the last five to ten years is is the money part of it. Um, sure. 
Well, and, and we'll say this. I did a show about this. And so when I, re- I, I know that this doesn't seem like a long time ago, and we made it. When I wrestled in high school, it wasn't that long ago. I was I graduated in 1984. I know Aristotle was still your teacher, anyway. Yeah, uh, I know. I, I know. I was at the bot- battle Thermopylae, you fucking boot. So, <laughs> uh, one of the things was during the summer we didn't have that many opportunities to go and, and wrestle. You had like two wrestling camps, and you had, you know, there just wasn't that much extracurricular activity. And now there are kids graduating high school that in the summer they wrestle a hundred matches. And one of the things that's driving, that is driving uh, a lot of the, the, the kids that are poorer, she just, uh, you just get flashed. Yes. Um, How'd you know? <laughs> because I see that look. You know what? It, it's just like, you know, I don't care if you see a woman breasts a thousand times, um, <laughs> you know, it's like seeing the sunrise. They're still beautiful. Yes. Um, but one of the things that they that parents are complaining about today about their kids and pops, you can you know weigh in on this um, that you've got to spend a lot of money on travel teams, on coaches, on getting them to tournaments, on oh, yeah. you know um, where we didn't. Have I got that. kids that play hockey. I will oh. totally vote for that. <laughs> and hockey is the second most expensive sport to field. Um, gear wise. Oh uh, yeah, skates, Jesus. Skates. My daughter is a goalie. I don't know. Yeah. She might be the most. Yeah, expensive. and and I and I'll challenge that because you look at a guy like Elio Castaneda, as we talked about him earlier today. You know, his parents sold their house so that he could continue go kart racing back in <laughs> back in in Brazil. Uh, and I mean, he he was wasn't even a teenager yet. Uh, that's how I mean they were spending upwards of. Five to seven thousand dollars a weekend for their races for those kids. Jesus was, Christ! It, it, okay, yeah, I don't was, spend that. Kind of was nuts on racing. Well, and here's you know here's the the one thing that too is that that <sighs> that is hurting a lot of the the kids and and I think one of the reasons the kids are so undisciplined today is we all grew up playing sports. Yeah, and you have to be disciplined to be able to play. I, I mean, you have to be able to be to to be disciplined to playing sports. Now we've taken that away from some of the kids that and replaced you know, it with Fortnite. Uh, huh? They replaced it with Fortnite. Right, but and I among mean, us. Now you have kids in order to be able to be competitive, um, you gotta go to you know to football camp, you gotta go to the Nike Spark camp, you gotta go to this camp, you gotta go to that camp, um, you gotta get individual coaches, you've got to get and you know most families can't afford it. No, oh, and, no. And and so I think one of the things that that is one of the reasons why sports is alienating people is you know the the days of that you could take up a sport your junior year in high school and be competitive at it are gone. And yeah, you take a look at also um, it. it the, the players' salaries. You know, Russell Wilson is the, the highest paid football player in, in the NFL right now, and he's $35 million a year. That's, I, I mean, yeah. when Joe Namath signed, he was the first player to break $100,000. In today's <laughs> money, that would be like, uh, it's not that much. Right. And you know, Russell Wilson has a staff that he pays a million dollars a year to to have him ready for, to play football. Right. You know, and and I, I think that that's one of the, you know, it's it, it it's changing the landscape of of how people view sports, and that's why people are so upset when you see political discussions in sports. They, they don't want to see that. They just go yeah. play. You know. Yeah. <laughs> At least Joe Namath got to sleep with Ann Margaret, though. Did he really? That's the rumor. <laughs> yeah, there was a thing. There's a rumor between them that they, they were thing and fucking redheads. And don't even ask my dad about that. So let's move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you make a great point. I mean, gee, it is, it's changed everything. But I mean, I still believe, and maybe this is a foolish sentiment, that there are still guys that come out of nowhere. I mean. 
<clears throat> look, there was a guy today uh, for Jacksonville that just tore up the Green Bay Packers. Undrafted free agent by the last last name. I don't know his first name, but last name was Robinson. And that dude just rolled over. Undrafted free agent. And just came, he came out of nowhere, played in two junior colleges, and then got to some bullshit Division II college. Got drafted. Uh, didn't get drafted. Got signed as a free agent. Basically put on a practice squad. And then like week two or whatever, whatever it was, got pulled up on, on – and he's been tearing shit up. Uh, it, it is possible. Um, I, 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 won't, I don't want to give him the yeah, whole today. I don't have to put my like son that. in traveling teams to be a great baseball player. I think if you Wait, learn the fundamentals – You're a Packer you, fan. Yeah, you, you remember played Dewan, good enough. You remember Dewan Harris? Yeah. That guy was cleaning cars before he was uh, – so was Kurt Warren. Kurt Warren banging part. groceries. I mean, I, yeah, it, it's, it's possible. You know, it's not in all fairness with Kurt Warner, Kurt Warner was a very good college quarterback. He yeah. wasn't just, you know, he wasn't Joe Schmuckatelli. But Tom Brady wasn't either. Tom Brady wasn't a very I, good I, college quarterback. You, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why do you bring up the Antichrist? Because <laughs> I want to yeah. piss you off. I, I mean, seriously. Because <laughs> I want to piss you off. And, and I want I want to put a picture up there. It shows what, it's six rings. What did, they, what, did, what did Tampa Bay do today? They won. Did they really? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's going to be an yeah, interesting. But they were playing the Panthers. Uh, well, whatever. It's still an NFL team. Any given uh, Sunday. The Americans but... see if they ran more, or they ran more than three times. So that was amazing. They ran three times last week. That was nuts. Well, they ran one time. They got a ninety-yard touchdown. So yeah. I helped. gotta tell you, right now, the, you know, they were talking about you know getting rid of Mike. You know, here's the other thing. I'm not a Steelers fan. My favorite football, one of my favorite football players, though, played for the Steelers. But I'm just not a, a. I'm not a Steeler. I'm not any. I, I should say that. Um, I, that's a question I want to ask. That mm -hmm. I, I want to have a realistic answer because. Uh, so, what do you consider a fan? What do you? You know, I'm a spectator, and in, in, I, I like football. I like baseball. I like um, basketball. I, I'm a spectator. I just I enjoy the game. Um, what do you consider a fan? Of a team, what well, you know, and and oh, well, it's I, easy. That's easy. That's somebody who lives vicariously through the accomplishments of the team that they follow. Like I'm a Cubs fan. I live through the Cubs, and I love when they succeed. I I feel genuine anxiety. I feel genuine dread when they lose. Uh, same with the Packers. Same with the Badgers. Same with the Red Wings, which has gotten old over the last I don't know decade and a half, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, Red like Wings. it's somebody who follows them and and, and, and and lives vicariously. It, it's it's not a it's not that team. It's my team. That's a fan. That's yeah. my and, team. and they live, live that's and die my with driver. Them, regardless, of the, regardless of what the team does. That, yeah, that's the other part. You always hey, get I'm, that hope, and like you know, my dad has <laughs> seen this. See me go through this many times with the Cubs, especially in 2003. Uh, <laughs> we lived together in Chicago, and, you know, it was the first time outside the Marine Corps that I had been in, in a bar where I saw grown men cry. <laughs> it's terrible. It, was, it hurt. It sucked. It hurt. It felt like, you know, I. it felt like, uh, you know, I got kicked in the balls by my mom. Like, it was just, it felt horrible. It was terrible. That I think that's a fan. I think that's a fan. Yeah. I think a spectator is somebody who just likes to see a good game. And I, I'm that guy too, you know. I watch a lot of football, baseball. Uh, I always have the MLB this. extra innings package where I watch any baseball game that's on. If my Cubs aren't on, just because I want to watch, I, I I enjoy the game. But I I don't have a dog in the fight, you know. It's, it, like if if Ohio State makes it to national championship, I'm gonna root for them ish. But I don't really have a dog in the fight because I fucking hate Ohio State. Fuck you. I don't know. Well, whatever. Uh, you're, from Ohio. You, you, you're from Grace to Ohio. I'm from Wisconsin to Ohio. So I got to keep <laughs> I know, but I, at least, you know what? I, I, I mean, hate Ohio is, State, too, so there's that. Yeah, there, there I, you go. Yeah, you know, you hate well, us I got Bucky can't Badger be right behind me here. I mean, yeah, yeah. See, Bucky, see Bucky back there? I got hairy bastard. Let me, let me tell you a Wisconsin story. Oh, God. <laughs> is so, it going to be short? Yeah, it is pretty short. Mm. So Russ 
in, in, in 1991, in his infinite wisdom, decides to schedule dual meet in Wisconsin. Guess what month? Oh, well, no, February? January. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's still so, in the middle of shit season. So <laughs> December just, through March, you're fucked. <laughs> um, so we just, so our dual meet is we, we dual meet um, Northwestern. We, we, we had to go to Northwestern. We had a, a, a dual meet um, at, uh, we, we dueled Northwestern. Then we drove to Wisconsin. So we get off, I, I mean, we get out of the, the, the bus and it is like minus 155 degrees. I believe it. <laughs> the, <laughs> I've lived it. There are people, you know, in the middle of the, you know, so in the middle of the campus, you know, they got that big ass lake. There are people ice skating mm -hmm. on the lake. Mendota, that, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, Mendota, yeah. And we get off the, the bus and go to, you know, to go to work out. And I'm like, Russ, what, what, what were you thinking? It's January in Wisconsin. You're from Wisconsin. You're from Stoughton, Wisconsin. And you <laughs> oh, which is in the dual. Madison area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he Madison. knows Madison's weather perfectly. <laughs> That's and in Dane County. Same yeah, county as Madison. And it was – and then they put us up in this – at uh, they, they put us up at the, the hotel, and we were right next to Mount Jack's, uh, you know, the steakhouse down yeah. – you know, the, mm -hmm. and the hotel was like – I, I mean – we had to turn the heat way up, and it was like, a, and it barely got to seventy degrees in the room. Sure. And I, I'm was like, it like a Road Star Hotel. Well, I forget what the, the, the name. I think it was a it was a Howard Johnson. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. Back in the day, Hojo was big here in the Midwest, yeah. and it was the same thing when we had to duel Notre Dame. Notre Dame put us up in this absolute horrible. Um, oh, it, I wonder it, why. It, well, no, because it was it, it's it, it's the it, it's the Howard Johnson that they had in in uh, um, um, well, no, 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 it, it, it's in Notre Dame, but oh. but we went there to to duel them. It, th this room looked like the they had the Brady Bunch wood paneling. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. They had, uh, so that looks like we had that. Oh, this, yeah this sounds like a wisconsin hotel to me oh yeah, oh, yeah. it's it just like and, <laughs> I've, and we, I've stayed in plenty of these from wrestling tournaments <laughs> we used to tell russ i mean all the time we, we'd have meetings with russ i'm like russ listen you've got to do some better stuff on the logistics part of it because we really that you know and we, we really can't you know function like this and he's like well you know it, you know, there's only so many times you can duel and stuff like that. Like, oh, all right, whatever. Um, but that was one of the, the worst ones there. And, and the bus trip to Iowa was always the, the, the fun one that you know, we would go to Iowa. Like, um, Iowa has to be like the 11th ring of purgatory hell because you see, um, it is you, you know, you see the same, like, it, it, it's like seeing corn. On top of corn, on top yeah. of corn, and you're, you're like Russ. Why would you not fly us into Iowa City? Is there's there's a reason for this? Um, and it, it just was it, it was funny back in uh, like I said back in the '80s and the early '90s trying to compete was completely different because transportation was not the same. And um, and well, today. I mean and the uh, the venues aren't the same either. Back then, you'd be in the UW Fieldhouse. It's not the Cole Center they have today. Right. Yeah. Well, I tell you, a tournament that they used to have that they they quit they they quit. Um, one of my favorite tournaments I used to go to, um, and I and I placed in it my sophomore year was they had the Beast of the East at the at at, uh, at Atlantic City, and. Um, uh, yeah, you can have him back here shortly. Um, um, but we we would fly into you know we would go to Atlantic City and we would wrestle 
at Atlantic City, and the, and the tournament was a really good tournament. And they quit having it, um, I think, after, I think, 95 or 96, they quit having the, the tournament there for college. Um, but it was, you know, it was just different. You know, it was different back then. And, and what's funny is when, when Mark got into the UFC and I got a chance to travel with him, um, you know, to, you know, to, uh, to, you know, help him for some of the fights and stuff in, in 10 short years, like from 88, I mean, from 92, 93 to 2000, and it was just eight short years, how much actual travel got easier to get to some events. And, and one of the things that, that has happened, um, we better uh, wrap it up soon, guys, because she's uh, yeah. How about five oh, yeah? It's already after eight thirty. Yeah, Fuck. might as well do final thoughts. Five minutes and we're done. How's that? Yeah, <laughs> final thoughts. Um, I was gonna do a show tonight, but I don't know that I'm. I was not really in the mood. I'd rather just talk with you guys because it's a lot easier and yeah, this is a lot fun. friendlier. A lot friendlier. Um, I, I got to tell you this. Um, I so my day consisted this morning. I have a, a Sunday routine that I'm doing, and I just want to share this with you. So at seven o'clock, um, and um, I go to TJ's in the morning at seven, and then I have breakfast, and then at eight o'clock we go to to Lexington and lift, and um, I do today I do de- you know Sunday's deadlift day, uh, deadlift and back, and then I go to jujitsu at ten, and we get I today we did six five minute rounds. Um, six five minute rounds. Yeah, full gi. We go six five oh, minute yeah. rounds. Full gi. Um, Jeez, that's like a full wrestling match around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> um, I say this, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm, uh, you know, because I like folding laundry with other people in it. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think part of the. I think part of the the reason we get old is we stop doing things that bring us that bring us joy. Yeah. And, and I and, and I, I'm not you know we're all you know we've done sports, but I think you, you know I, I watch kids. You know I, I you, they they stop doing what is fun, and I'm like I'm 54 years old. I like getting on the mat. I like lifting. I like working out. I you know. Um, and I, and, and John, you know, I, you know, you have your son to, you know, to play with and, and stuff like that. But I think as you get older, it's, it's so easy to abandon those things that brought us so much joy. And I don't understand it. I, I mean, it's just like, why would you let somebody deprive you of your happiness? Yeah. Oh. And, and, and I, and I think that that's something that is so easy to do that today, especially with everything going on. Go out and have fun. Go do something. One of the things I'm really, I got to say something to Dean Cerny. I am really, I'm not jealous of him. I I really like the post that he makes about the trains. And um, because he's doing something that is um, enjoyable and fun. Yeah, you got to have a hobby, right? Other people, that's the other part. And what? It, it brings fun to other people when they see what he's got. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, I, we love it. We we all love Dean. All right, we got we got to move on. We got to close this out because I'm gonna get in trouble, and that's just not gonna happen. Hey, so, I love Michelle, just if she's listening. Oh, she hey. knows you love, and she loves you too, George. Uh, you know that. Uh, T. All right, final thoughts, brother. Um. Yeah. Uh. Everybody, have a good one out there. Um. I don't say stuff like this often, but um. If you are interested in helping uh, my uh, wife's family out with uh, supporting typhoon victims, give me a message. I will connect you with her uh, sister-in-law overseas that's uh, kind of arranging this feeding stuff for people. They're really in need right now um, with uh, just fresh water and just getting something in their belly stuck in these uh, shelters. So. Uh, I can connect you with somebody just, yeah, I, I don't want any money sent directly to me because yeah, pay money to send it to me. And then we pay money to send it overseas. I'd rather hook you up with my sister-in-law. There you so go. give Absolutely. me a message if you want. 
Absolutely help them out, and, and hopefully it's the end of the typhoon season over there. But uh, yeah, we shall hopefully, see. hopefully, yeah. Rizal got hammered, and so did Marikina and uh, Carmintis, Sir, and a couple other provinces. Quezon, I think. But yeah, it's 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 a shit situation. They got a Quezon down there, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, Quezon's Quezon. I think is actually bigger than Manila. It's considered a suburb, but I think it actually has more people. <laughs> wow. <Well, good point. laughs> What's up, Pops? What do you got? Final thoughts. Uh, well, we, we're going to try and get some pictures together for the, the future show so that you, you can see exactly who we're talking about. Uh, we didn't get a chance to go through that today. But uh, plus, Formula One is talking about giving us rights to do do highlights. So uh, that's something we're working on for next year. We got the rights to do uh, IndyCar for next year. So uh, we're, we're just we're just working our through, way through it. And it will be impressive when we finally get around to it. Yeah, I can't wait for that to be able to play the clips and whatnot. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to that. You know how much I love auto racing. I was a, I was a, a hostage <laughs> for years. Uh, but it was you were great, my great, mule. <laughs> it, yes, I was. I was your mule. You know, back in the day when you know recorders weighed sixty five pounds. You know, I would have made a great Mormon. I really would because uh, <laughs> I was carrying that shit anyways. Um, but uh, my final thoughts, uh, thank you to George for coming on. Thank you to T. Thank you to Pops, as always. Thank you to everybody who tuned in and, and will continue to turn the show and share it out. Um, you know, I know sports is kind of an eh thing right now, but uh, I still love it between the whistles, and I always will. Um, so just mute the commercials and move on. Um, remember, never take a permanent solution to a temporary problem. The world's going to turn. But it won't get better if you're not here. Uh, I have a members only jacket to that. I lost my uh, second wife, and uh, you know, one of the most hated people <laughs> in my life was my my dad's brother, and he rescued me out of, out of out of the out of the darkness and made me work for him again. It rescued me, and uh, God bless him. He's no longer with us, but he was he was a good man in that respect. And you know, hey. This 22 day thing's got to stop. That's all I got to say. Uh, thank you all yeah. for following the sports and, and continue watching Sports Church. We've been uh, hit a little bit in the ratings, but uh, you know, hey, I, I don't, I understand that because uh, not a lot of people watch the sports as much as they used to. But anyways, we will and say. I, and I didn't even bring up golf today, so that's. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Dustin Johnson won the Masters. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it when Faith wants us to mention the uh, Beard BQ uh, Hawaiian shirts. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Well, get over to Beard BQ uh, Sauce on Facebook and check out that new beautiful jet black Hawaiian shirt with the Beard BQ Sauce all over it. It's awesome. And if you want to get a sauce and you got you want a little heat. Or that uh, Carolina Reaper. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. Uh, but I, don't I, give, I, it, don't give it to your toddler. Just saying. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Somebody else did. <laughs> it didn't work out that well. All right. Thank you all. I didn't, Love you I all. didn't vote for the black Hawaiian, but uh, I'm probably going to have to order one still. Because <laughs> it does look pretty slick. Yeah. All right. I love you all. Yeah, I love we you all. Thanks for tuning in. Share it out. And uh, we'll, we'll see you again next week. Make sure you check out Monday Night Mayhem tomorrow night. The Bar 2000 Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. And uh, the Bear News, if he's going to do it, on 2000 Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. Adios. Warrior Wallet Thursday. Bear News. Warrior Sunday. Wallet. Sorry. So Excuse we'll me. be back and broadcasting Warrior Wallet this week. Anyway, good luck. Uh, good night, guys. Awesome. Take care. Good night. See you.